just one thing after another, and it all falls on my head to... Hey, Nath. What? Can't you see I'm... Alfin? Looks like you have your hands full. As much as ever. As if I wasn't busy enough putting down the last remnants of Ren and Rule, I'm up to my ears and Dan in disputes. And then, to top it all off, that thing had to come crashing down from out of the sky. Pretty sure we've heard this somewhere before. But enough about my problems. What can I help you with? Yeah, we're looking for an old Renan starship. You wouldn't happen to know any around these parts, would you? A starship? What do you need one of those for? To get to Lenigus. Lenigus? Are you out of your damn mind? Believe it or not, it wouldn't be the craziest thing we've done recently. Well, I believe it. Well, either way, I'm afraid I haven't heard anything about a starship. Then do you have any historical records by chance? Sure, we've got stacks of old records. Mind if we take a look at them? Yeah, okay. Thanks, Nath. I read through all of the records, but I only found a single line that might point to what we're looking for. It mentions a rock that shot across the sky and landed past the mountains. The event was recorded just before the first Renan invasion. And you think that might be the starship? I don't know. There was nothing else in the records that came even close. It looked like it was someplace called Berg, but maybe I'm reading it wrong. Berg? That ring any bells for you? Yeah, that's one of the biggest volcanoes in Calaglia. I was just there recently, investigating a report of a meteor someone saw. Another meteor in the same area? Really? I wonder if it could have been one of those lights that shot out of the wedge. All the more reason to check it out. Can you tell us how to get there? The old Zion mine is up that way. One of the veins we abandoned connects to the volcano. Go ahead and use that. But you should be careful. Huh? I don't know if it has anything to do with the meteor, but there's a giant Zugal running riot in there. Never seen anything like it. A Zugal, huh? Well, I turned back as soon as I caught sight of the thing, so I can't tell you much more. Just be real careful if you head out that way. Hmm... Hmm? All right. Hmm? I guess... <sighs> hmm... Hmm...
Right. I didn't like the sound of that monster Nath was talking about one bit. Well, we have to press on. We're going through Zion Mine to Berg Volcano. Let's move. <coughs> Everything okay with Hoodle, Rinwell? He seems kind of out of spirits. It must be the heat getting to him. We don't get these kind of temperatures back in Cislodia. Galaglians born and raised here struggle with it too, so it's no surprise. Aha! So that's why his plumage is so white. He was born in a winter wonderland! Actually, Dan and owls absorb the astral energy of whatever land they're raised in. Where they're born doesn't affect their appearance at all. But that's not why he's white. The real reason is that he's still just a baby. Woo! You mean their plumage changes color depending on where they grow up? Weird. And with all this traveling we've been doing, it wouldn't surprise me if his wings ended up looking like a colorful painting. I think he suits his snowy complexion. It'll feel strange to see him change. How awesome would it be if his head and wings were different colors, and his stomach and sides like a map of our travels? <laughs> Ow, lay off, will ya? So much for the heat making him docile. You've only yourself to blame for that one. Hoodle takes pride in his appearance, you know. Fascinating. An appreciation of aesthetic beauty in an owlet so young. <laughs> Dohalim, I think you've drawn his attention. We've reached our destination. Like this should be easy. Searing well, I'll face you. Reload. A comfortable win.
Is the blazing sword okay? A little water's not going to hurt it. What do you say we check back in on the ranch? Ugh, I'm exhausted. This is a true masterpiece, no less than culinary art. Shion, could we talk a moment? Hey, do you have time to talk? There's something I need to ask you. Of course. What's up? It's about the doll I used to have as a little girl. I gave it some more thought, and I still don't remember actually receiving it from anyone. You were so little. I don't think it's that surprising you've forgotten, is it? Yeah, but here's the thing. That doll was so old, I'm starting to think I just always had it with me from the start. I know that it's extremely unlikely, but after last time we talked, it got me thinking. Maybe... Maybe you brought the doll that child made with you to Lenegas. I couldn't be. Are you saying you didn't? Ugh. <sighs> Look, logically speaking, I know it's a lot more likely that you didn't bring it with you than you did. But you can't say for sure you didn't, right? Crazier things have happened. I always thought I'd be alone, only to end up meeting you and Law and Rinwell and Kisara and Dohalim. Sometimes things happen in life that we never thought possible. You make a good point. I left everyone and everything I knew behind 300 years ago. But now, I'm not so alone anymore. Exactly. You crossed all those centuries to find all of us, so... Why can't a little doll have made the same jump, too? Right? Look, it's up to you to decide if there's any meaning behind all of this. But I choose to think there is. Yeah, I think so, too. There's something beautiful about the whole thing that simply can't be denied. I'm looking forward to breakfast. Come on, guys. We've got lots to do.
Have you guys checked your equipment lately? It's qu quite hot here. The climate. Out of our way! Radiant Small, but a victory nonetheless. We have a long way yet to go. Something feels odd here. Be on your guard. So we're back in the Zion Mine Tunnels. Who would have thought we'd be going through this place again? This is where you and I first fought together. And also the first time we touched, as I recall. Wait, really? Yes, really. Barely a blip on our radar. Small, but a victory nonetheless. We have a long... Way yet to go. So this path is supposed to take us out to Berg Volcano? We're not gonna see any lava burst out in front of us or anything, are we? Don't get so paranoid you let a rock fall on your head, Law.
Ugh, so hot. Well, yeah. We've reached the inner portion of Berg Volcano. We need to find that... Starship. And fast! No choice! Dance in the wind! Far enough! Can you take care of them? Hold on to your arc. Here I come. Please let Now! Heroes. The enemy wields arts too. We'll soon see about that. I wonder if we can make new weapons with this. Coming through. Take Resonate this. with the earth. Seriously, on your knees. You're on. I can carve through armor. Let me get that. Stay calm. I shall no, provide it. We can turn the tables on. There are still more oh, left. Right. You got fire. I've got this. Got a watchman here. All is too strong. All yours. Rising wyvern. Rising wyvern. This one's mine. Not today. This one keeps charging us! That's what my shield's for! Get behind me! I'm done! I'll leave it to you! Take me to the arc! Megasonic thrust! Pierce through! It weakens! This end? Take this! Rising Wyvern! This end now! Consider yourself finished! We can really make weapons with this? My word. Earth, this must be the work of Providence. Prova what now? It means destiny. I think it's a bit of an exaggeration, though.
You can make plants grow instantly? <sighs> what if we use this for fruits and vegetables? I'd rather not be our party's fertilizer. Retreat if you know what's good for you! Excited. I'll take you all on! Hold on to your eyes! Here I come! Getting swallow blades! Holy Lord! Lord. 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 It curls up! Time to get out of the way! Rising Wyvern! That can easily be a Just as well, I'm here to stop you. attack without risk? Because I can't afford to hesitate. Not against the worthy opponent. You fight better at a distance. You and I both. Looks like it could be worth something. Driving. You can ease off yourself. Pot calls the kettle black. Good advice for all of us, to be honest. Come and face me! Back in the Here's the eagle! I'll stop its charge! Thanks, Kisara! The flame inside me! Your high is armor! Hear me! Burn! Uh, and listen to me! Lightning storm! I'm ready to go! In an instant! Impact cross! We work well together! Like a finely timed wall. It's rising red! Swallow blade! I never miss! Demon fang! Air thrust! Destruction! Light ass blocks on the ground! We're in good form! My face is starting to sting. And my throat feels super parched. Here, have some water. Just make sure you don't drink too much. Thanks. I won't forgive you! Oh, oh, no. back in there to face Glad you have your use of ready and rare. I'll, I'll show you how you collect. Take! Blow them away! Was that a new skill I saw back there? Indeed. Well, sort of. Actually, it's a family staple hearkening back eight generations. Uh, maybe you can just write all this down? Another reason! I 
However, I can. As impressive as always. Ah, here I hoped I was improving. We managed to pull through. Victory for the ages. My word. This must be the work of Providence. Prova what now? It means destiny. I think it's a bit of an exaggeration, though. Courteous, aren't you? what I like to hear. One. That was almost too easy. No enemy can stand against us. If only every battle went so well. This bridge will hold itself together, right? Most definitely. Though I won't make any promises. Which one is it? Let's 
see what you've got. Blade, elusive deity, go back again. Thunderfield, flaming thrust, and the power Take of this. Mega ray. Are those rocks? I'm ready. ready. Not today. There you go. 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 Astral energy. Say no more. That astral energy was incredible. I gave it everything I had. Careless. I won't forgive you. Not in your dreams. Try this. Try this. Armor won't save you. Burning. Do it. You're being targeted. Look sharp. Lightning Tiger Blade! Take it! One more! The Lightning Tiger Blade! Sure! To be the Black Blade! The Black Blade! I never point. miss! Catapult! Ignite! Now or never! Air Strike! Glacial Spear! Lightning Rock! Now! Get off! Look sharp! Lightning Tiger Blade! Whew! Thank goodness we won! Easy to see rocks melt before our eyes. Watch where you're going, everyone. If you fall, there will be nothing left of you. Exactly. So don't try anything funny. Especially you, Law. No pushing anyone. Not even as a joke. I'm not a little kid! I didn't know you had that sort of trick up your sleeve, darling. I would have figured rocks and plants would be too different for you to handle both. Not necessarily. Now. Try this! On 
your a thrilling Luna corruption. Got it. Air Now's our chance. I'm ready for the next battle. on you, Rinwell. On me? Well, I'll do my best. Mm. Man, I'm famished. Probably that monster Nath warned us about, if I had to guess. Do you think this might have been where one of those lights that shot out of the wedge landed? But why this location, if the purpose of the wedge is to harvest Dana's astral energy? We can figure that out later. If that thing gets into town, it's going to cause chaos. 
We need to take it down and move on. Let's go! This one's tough, but we have no choice. Let me know if you need healing. Here it comes! Focus! On your toes, everyone! Suddenly turning tail doesn't seem so ridiculous. Why? Are you scared? Me? <laughs> Are you? Do you even have to ask? Of course I'm scared! Focus up before we become that thing's lunch! It's summoning Zoogle? Take care of them while keeping an eye on it! You picked the wrong fight! Where are you going? In a bind? I'm out of the fray! There you go! Don't let up! Burning! I'll smack you! I'm not done! It looks like you got this one covered! Got it! Now's our chance! Magic is there! Do it! Astral energy! Say no more! Shut! Well done! Go Next, see what I can do! Double demon time! Rising wyvern! Start up! Can you take it? Thunder! 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 This ends now! Consider yourself finished! Now or never. Here come more! We'll just have to keep fighting. An oh, astral here. Here. That's my cue! Shut him down! Now. In a bind, be sure to be left free! Get on there with I'll the other! Not on my watch! Rising Wyvern! You're out! Oh, no. Burn it out. Out. I'm ready! ready. Here I go! Not on my watch! Let us see what I can do! Now. Double denied! Healing circle! This debt shall not be forgotten. This debt shall not be forgotten. Take now it's dead. my turn! Impressive as always. Ah, here I I no, I, I mean you're even better than ever. I've never seen Sion actually look flustered. It's about to strike. Look sharp, everyone. Everyone, all right? We won't surrender. We won't retreat. Not yet. Whatever you do, just please stay safe. How are we supposed to take on something so big? I'll handle it. Elfin! Just watch and learn. That's enough!
Everyone okay? Yeah, I think so. That thing scared the pants off me. It felt like it had a different aura than other Zoogles, didn't it? Yeah. It wasn't like the one that Almadria sicked on us either. Its elemental astral energy variance was out of this world. It was like fighting a lord. I guess it's safe to assume that if it came out of the wedge, it must have played some part in helping harvest astral energy. But what? Perhaps a living spirit vessel? It's plausible, given the location. Or it may be part of a new force dispatched to regain control of Dana. If we assume that monster was one of the four beams of light, we must have prevented something from taking place here. I'd like to think so, knowing how much grief it gave us. But at least with that out of the way, we can keep moving forward now. Let's go. So I still had room to grow. What do you know? Another big fire monster with nothing better to do than get in our way! I wonder where the rest of those lights ended up landing. It looked like they were pretty scattered. Well, whatever they're after, let's just hope none of them are anywhere near a city. An ambush on civilians is the last thing we need. Well, no rest for the wicked, right? Though, with one down and three to go, it sounds like our headache is just beginning. 
I thought you liked the opportunity to flex your muscles. Against those things? It's not like I have a death wish. Besides, we've already got our hands full saving the world. Dying stupidly won't be much help to the cause. Yeah, I guess I can't argue with that logic. Sorry. Hey, is that it over there? Did you remember something? No, but... I have seen this starship before. This is it. This is the ship I traveled in when I escaped from Lenegas. Three centuries later, and it's no worse for wear. I'll take a look at the internals. Damn! I'm amazed it still works at all after all this time. The past meets the present. I really am from a different time and place. Yeah. But you've got us now, Alfin. Not only that, but you've helped out so many people, too. Law's right. Rinwell, too. You're one of us now. No more carrying the weight of history on your shoulders. You're a part of this world. Right. Thanks, you guys. It should fly. All internal systems seem to be operating. However, considering how long it's remained inactive, I suspect it will take some time before it's ready for takeoff. How much time are we talking here? Starship mechanics are not what I'd call my forte, so I'd rather not hazard a guess. So we've just got to sit around here and wait? I'm terrible at waiting. That's because you're a child. Oh, but how about we use this time to prepare and gather supplies for the trip? Good idea. Who knows when we'll be back from Lenegas once we leave. We should prepare ourselves for every possible scenario before we go. Let's try not to stay away too long. I'd hate for anything to happen to the place while we're gone. Either we race ahead, or we take due precaution to ensure we have no regrets. I shall leave it up to you as to how we proceed, Alfin. Works for me.
funny, isn't it? What is? All this. When we first started this thing, did you ever imagine we'd be going to Lenegas? After all, this is the sort of thing I was rebelling against when I ran away from home, right? I'm sure Zephyr would be proud if he knew what his son was doing right now. And a little shocked, too. We're defying the order of things that have persisted for 300 years. <laughs> Deep down, I knew our journey would lead to confronting Lenegas. Yeah, you maybe, but you're a Renan. The rest of us can barely even picture what it means to leave Dana. No offense to Xion and Dohalim, but it's worth remembering we're heading into enemy territory. No offense taken, and this is no picnic for me either. Remember. Our aim is to ensure that both Lenegas and the Renan homeworld leave Dana alone for good. I don't think we'll be able to avoid a fight. Is there no way we can talk them into leaving us alone? The people of Lenegas? Sure. I mean, we found a way to make it work with Xion and Dohalim, right? And it's not just us. If places like Menensia can do it, then why can't we- Because there are still many of my kind who believe it was right and natural that Rena reigns over Dana. There are those on Lenegas who have never stepped foot on Dana. I doubt whether they'd even listen to Danans. Look, none of us want to fight. But these are the same people who fired that wedge down on Dana. What happens next is on them. Right. We're not going to sit back and wait for them to oppress us again. Right. Don't forget, there's also a good chance the Red Woman is somewhere on Lenegas. And wherever she is, we should find the Renesalma, too. That's right. If we can take it back, then Xion can finally get rid of her thorns. <sighs> Xion? Huh? Uh, yeah. Where'd Xion go? How could she just go off on her own? She's not over there. Where did she run off to? Xion. Xion. Xion! It's your thorns? But why? You okay? Just now, I looked like you used your maiden powers to suppress your thorns. You can really do that? Stay out of my way. Wait a second. Are you planning to go alone? Shut up! Why would you do this? I told you to shut up! <laughs> I won't let you. I mean it. I refuse to let you. I won't tell you again. Move or I'll shoot. If that's the case... Then go ahead and shoot me!
Do you remember back when I was stabbed? By Volron? Yeah. I thought for sure that he had killed you back there. That wasn't the first time. Huh? The first time was when I was only a child. After that, no matter how often, I just couldn't die. Couldn't die? So you're immortal? How's that even... <clears throat> I believe you, Xion. But tell me how... How is something like that possible? My thorns. They're me, but at the same time, not. They're part of me. I have no idea why. But my thorns will never let me die. At least not before I'm meant to. You can't die before your death? When my thorns free themselves, it will be my death. <laughs> I've seen it. A darkness that swallows up everything until nothing remains. It's a vision of oblivion I can't escape. I want to believe it's all just a bad dream. But no matter what I tell myself, I... I know it's not. Yeah, but you... Wait. The whole reason you... You needed the Renes Alma was to get rid of your thorns, right? If I burn away what's inside, then what will happen to the rest of me? <gasps> right. Either way you look at it, I'm going to die. But if I am going to die, I figure I can at least take my thorns out with me. That's what I've been after this whole time. That's why you turned your back on your fellow Renans and chose to fight with us, isn't it? And while we've all been fighting to keep on living, you have been with us fighting desperately to die. That was the plan? But then I met all of you, and I... Before I knew it, I didn't want to die anymore. Xion, don't lose hope yet. We'll find a way to save you. There's still time to... It's pointless. Why? Because the darkness won't just consume me. The truth is, it will consume all of existence as well. It was only a suspicion at first, but ever since the Red Woman triggered my maiden powers, I've been more certain than ever before. It was then that I finally came to realize my powers were holding my thorns in check the entire time. But they don't anymore. Not since Lenegas. When the wedge fell. Every day, I feel the thorns' power growing stronger inside of me. Pretty soon, I won't be able to hold them back anymore. And when that happens... They will consume all existence. And that's why you wanted to leave by yourself. You planned to find the Renes Alma on your own and sacrifice yourself to stop the thorns. But that's... too much. It's way too much. When this all began, I didn't care what happened to me or anyone else. And what happened to the Renans or the Danans didn't matter to me at all. I know I have to die. But I don't want to. Not now that I have this. I wish we had never met. Then I wouldn't have to feel this way. Sion! Elfin? Only living for the sake of dying. 
is no better than being a slave. How can you endure this? Elfin. It's not fair. I don't care what anybody says. I won't let it happen. We can fight this. We'll fight until the end together. Isn't that what you said to me before? Even if it should mean... that it'll be the end of everything else, too? Shion, what do you want? It's your decision, ultimately. But if you decide not to fight fate, I will. Even if I have to do it alone. No. You won't be alone. I'll fight as well. Count me in as well. I want to be a force for good, not hate. And me too. I meant it with all of my heart when I told you before. Neither of you are alone in this at all. You guys... And I, for one, don't believe this venture is without hope. Huh? Shion is the descendant of a maiden from 300 years ago. Given the circumstances, it seems very likely that those events have some connection to her thorns. The true nature of which, I imagine we will discover as we make our way to Lenegas and uncover the truth of what's unfolding. I take it you mean we might find a way to get rid of her thorns and she'll live? It's certainly possible. Though I suspect the nature of the Sovereign is connected somehow. So be it. I've already lost everything I had once. And I won't let it happen again. Shion. No matter what happens from now on, we're right here with you. All of us are. You are not alone. You guys... You're all so stubborn. Thank you, everyone. For right now, and a little while longer, I just want to hold on to this dream. And most of all, more than anything else, I want to be with all of you! So let's go. On to Lenicus.
The end of the world. It's hard to believe, isn't it? I believe Shion is telling the truth. What about you? As a friend, yes. I want to believe her. Everything that's happened seems to point towards some sort of great danger that's lurking ahead of us. Still, it's hard to fathom something that could usher outright doom to the world. That those really are the stakes we face. No, I understand. Even Shion doesn't seem to know exactly what will happen to bring it all about. We have so many pieces of the puzzle in our hands, so many clues, yet the complete picture eludes us. So where do her thorns fit in, then? Well, I imagine they must sit at the very center of it all. You remember the voice we all heard while we were inside the Wedge, don't you? Yeah, I remember. It was the will of Dana's astral energy come to life. Well, that's what we all thought. Right. And from that, we're able to hypothesize how vast concentrations of astral energy can become sentient. Let's return to when we found Xion in Pelegion. When her thorns went wild, they contained far more astral energy than any mere Renin would normally have inside them. So you think those thorns might be alive too? That their will is what keeps her from dying? But why would they want to destroy the entire world? As for that, I really cannot say for certain. Its goals still remain a mystery. It may be a mere fluke that her maiden powers have been able to contain it thus far. You know, I've noticed since we've met that you like figuring out riddles. Can you blame me? When one realizes that the world they once thought to be true is but a mere facade, they can't help but seek the truth. Especially when that deception has led to others getting hurt. Dohalim? I imagine the remaining pieces of the puzzle that we seek rest somewhere within Lenigus. As for what the final picture will look like, who can say? I think it's best we not dwell on it too much for the time being. Right. How are you holding up? Who, me? Yes, you. You took a hit from those thorns again, didn't you? Oh, that? That was nothing. Compared to what Xion's going through, you mean? Still, even if you yourself might be willing to endure that kind of pain, that doesn't mean Xion wants to have to see you get hurt by her thorns, you know? <sighs> yeah, I know. I'll be careful. Xion doesn't know how lucky she is to have you around, you know? Dashing in to save her at the last minute? Yeah, yeah, very funny. I'm being serious. You went up and held her close like you still had that mask on, and you didn't even bat an eye. She really needed that. That's what I mean when I said you saved her. Just like you did with the rest of us. I just want for Xion what we all have. The ability to touch someone without the fear of killing them. 
Those thorns have robbed her of the kind of everyday things we all take for granted. And it's not right. You can say that again. It may be normal for us, but that doesn't make it any less special or important for her. I hope she gets what she wants. I have my own dreams, but a world without her, where she dies so we can all survive, isn't a world I want to live in. Agreed. It's like more and more keeps getting taken from her, and I'm done with it. Sleep. After everything we just heard? How could I? Fair enough. Xion's had to deal with so much on her own. Even when we were all laughing and celebrating, she just kept quiet and didn't say anything. I thought she was keeping her distance because of her thorns. That it was because she didn't want to hurt anybody by getting too close. I just figured that that was the type of person she was, you know? But... It turned out to be none of that. All this time, she felt like she had to die and sacrifice herself for the greater good. But even then, she didn't think she could say anything to us about it. I know. She was so alone this entire time. How could I call her a friend and yet be so completely blind to everything she was going through? I'm sure it made her happy, knowing you were there for her. You... Really think so? Yeah, I do. If she didn't think of us as friends, I don't think she could have ever opened up to us like that. You were a good friend to her before, and you'll be an even better one now. Yeah, I really hope so. I want to be the best I can for her. When you think about it, we were all alone in our own way. But over time, we've all found ways to let each other into our lives. I hope Xion's able to do that one day, too. No, I mean, I hope she's able to do that more. Lots and lots more. I think it'd be really nice if we could all just be there to support each other when it really counts. And forget about our grudges and pain. Rinwell. Did you know? You mean about Xion? Yeah, I didn't have the slightest idea. I mean, every once in a while I thought something seemed a little off, but I never could have imagined. It's like a completely different world was spinning around me and I couldn't even see it. You and me both. I mean, I knew something was bothering her, but I could never quite figure out what it was. You? But you're the one always looking out for her, aren't you? That's what I thought. But in reality, I didn't understand it all. What I thought was helping and being there for her was actually just driving her into a corner. At least you figured it out in time, though, right? I don't think we're out of the woods yet. But yeah, you're right. We brought her back from the edge, and we're going to stop those thorns from taking her. No matter what. Yeah, with all of us together, there's nothing we can't handle. Xion, the world, we can save everyone. And I mean it when I say we, Alfin. I know. No lone wolfing it. Hey, you're the expert on what my dad would say. Do you think he'd pat me on the back or tell me off? Zephyr, I don't think that he'd have that much to say, to be honest. You're your own man now, Law. And you've already made up your own mind about what you want. I guess he couldn't say anything even if he wanted to. Law. Sorry. 
I guess those of us amongst the living have enough problems to deal with, don't we? We'll need all our strength to save Xion. I'll probably end up worrying again at some point, but I guess I'll think it over more then. That okay? Yeah, I think it is. Hey, you doing all right? <laughs> I seem to cause nothing but worry. As much as I try to look like I have things under control, everyone still worries about me. You're not the only one. Hey. Do you remember the first time you said I was your friend? Uh, no. When was that? Sorry, I can't remember. That's okay. It came so naturally to you, I'm not surprised you forgot. I was different back then. The Danans were not even people to me. And I knew I would always be alone. But in that room with Deadheim, when you called me your friend, it just shattered the wall that I'd built up around me. Because until that moment, I'd only seen you as a means to an end. I thought of you as a way to use the Blazing Sword and to obtain the Renes Alma. <laughs> but after that day, one time became two. And before I knew it, you'd made a habit of calling me and Dohalim your friends. It didn't matter that we were Renans. You cared about us as you would any other people. Then, everyone else started to call me their friend too. To think of me as their friend. Before then, I never even dreamed I could have that. I didn't want to die and lose you all. But I also didn't want to live if it meant you would all die in my place. Shion. But then, I realized... I'd only really been thinking of myself that entire time. After saying how I felt... and hearing what you all had to say... I finally understood that. <sighs> Don't worry, it's okay. I'm not planning on dying anymore. I've met too many people along the way who I truly care about to give in now. So I'll fight. For Dana and for myself. I'll fight against my fate to preserve our future. And I'll win, come hell or high water. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I won't let the world end be- It's going to be a long, hard road ahead, Xion. Our fight won't be over until everyone, both Danans and Renans, can finally live in peace. But I swear I'll be there with you, until the very end. Thank you. Remember what we learned? Yeah, I think you may be right about that.
Everyone well rested? Then let's go. We depart for Lenegas. Well, it's the moment of truth. This lady better hold together once we're up in the air. Law, don't say that! You're going to jinx us! Speaking of which, Alfin, this bucket of bolts got a name? A name? Hmm. You know, I'm not sure she ever had one. I never really thought about it. Well, after all the trouble we went through to find her, we should give her one, right? I was thinking something like... Thaw Knights. Huh? It means owl in the ancient tongue. Literally, the one drawn to the skies. I like it. Sounds perfect for our little escapade. Not sure I'm completely convinced, but... Well, it's as good a name as any. From now on, she'll be known as the Fall Knights. Okay, people. We have two goals. First, we need to get to Lenegas and make the Renans finally leave Dana alone. And then, we need to figure out the truth behind Shion's thorns and find a way to save her. Sound good? All right, then let's go. You know, I can still hardly believe it. Believe what? I mean, just look at it. The whole of existence crammed inside a tiny frame. Now that you mention it, I guess you're right. It does look more like a painting than a living, breathing world. From up here, all the struggles we've been through feel so insignificant. Nothing like realizing how small you are to put everything into perspective. Kinda makes the differences between the Renans and the Danans feel pretty small too, huh? How much longer until we reach Lenegas? There are better ways to use your time than napping. We should take a moment to familiarize ourselves with the facilities on board before arrival. Good idea. The Starship may end up serving as our base of operations once we're down there. Think you'll be all right with the controls? You mean the ones set to automatic pilot? 
I dare say I'll manage. I'm basically just here to supervise. In that case, she's all yours. Everything okay, Xion? You seem a little... different. Different? Like, in a bad way different? No, not at all. Hmm. Is something wrong? No. I was merely thinking how it had been seven years, that's all. You mean since you became a lord and left Lenigus? I guess even someone like you can get homesick, huh? I am as prone to sentimentality as any other. Tell me, though. You too have a history with Lenigus. A traumatic one, no less. This trip will probably mean facing up to some difficult emotions. Doesn't that frighten you? Well... It is a place where I took the lives of countless people. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about it. But I can't keep running forever. The past is what it is. There's no changing that. But the future's what we make it. I see. Dohalim? Forgive me. I was wrong to pry. We have more pressing matters to address. Come back and speak to me when you finish looking around the ship.
We'll be going to Lenigus soon. This must feel like a homecoming of sorts to you, huh? What was life on Lenigus like back then? You know, before you came to Dana. Let's just say, I don't have many happy memories. I've had thorns my whole life. For as long as I can remember. They called it treatment. But in truth, they were just using me as a guinea pig for- You mean, they experimented on you? That's right. All I was to them was a riddle to solve. They poked and prodded me, trying to figure out what triggered my thorns or changed the form they took. Day in and day out, every single day, one test after another. I'm still surprised they didn't try to dissect me. The look they gave me whenever one of them touched my skin. How could I forget it? Reeling from the pain, like I was a monster or something. Some existence, huh? A blight on any I touched, helplessly complicit in their pain. I thought things couldn't get any worse, but then they did. I started to have nightmares, visions of the coming apocalypse. <sighs> Is it any wonder I lacked a cheery disposition? Unable to so much as touch another soul. Loneliness was my best friend. Sure, I survived, but with the knowledge that one day I'd be swallowed up by oblivion. That's when it hit me. If I was going to die, then it should mean something. If I have to sacrifice myself to save the world, so be it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you relive that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm in a much better place now. You say it's your destiny to die so that others can live, but why not the other way around? Why shouldn't we be the ones dying to save you? Uh, are you crazy? Why would you sacrifice your life for- That's exactly my point. Why should you have to give up your life just because you drew the short straw in the destiny stakes? How is that even right? It's that logic that's used to justify slavery, as if some of us were just meant to be sacrificed. This struggle was never about saving only ourselves. But that doesn't mean we have to give up our own lives to save everyone else's either. If we're doing this to protect people, if we're doing this to save the world from destruction, then that has to include saving each other as well. A world free of sacrifice. That's what you've been fighting for all along, isn't it? Not just me. We're in this together, remember? This fight is yours too, Xion. If we're going to win, everyone has to win. There can be no room for losers in this fight. Now I see it. The true nature of our struggle. A victory without losers. But that means that a Danon victory over Rena can't be the end. Do you think we can pull it off? You bet we can pull it off. We have to. It's the only hope we have of things ever changing. Yeah, you're right. No one's ever changed the future without aiming for the stars. We can do this. Together. Listen to this! So Law and I were just talking, and... Hey, shut up! What's got Law all flustered? Only that he's afraid of flying, the big baby. And after all that fuss he made about naming the ship, too. Hey, I never said I was scared. I just think it's, you know, a little unsettling how we're going to be cruising through space in a glorified tin can. That's all. It's a starship, dummy. That's what it's supposed to do. I don't think there's anything strange about it. Well, maybe you're the one with the problem, then. Guys, guys. I'm no expert, but I think we can trust Ren and technology. It got me to Dana in one piece, remember? Oh, that's a good point. If you think so, Alfin, it must be okay. Don't you agree, Law? Hard to argue with that, seeing how you hitched a ride in one of these things before, Alfin. It's just wrong, okay?
You okay? Feeling airsick? Actually, now that you mention it, not at all. These starships are a remarkably smooth ride, all things considered. Nothing like being at sea, thank goodness. Glad to hear it. That device there caught your eye, huh? I was just wondering what it is. It looks big enough to fit a person inside of it. It's a healing pod. It fixes injuries and illnesses. Oh, you don't say. That should definitely come in handy if any of us get injured while we're down there. <sighs> Alfin? Was it something I said? No, I... Uh, I was just thinking back to when I escaped Lenigus, that's all. What with the ceremony and losing control, I was a total mess. Nayori laid me inside here. So, you're saying you got in this thing straight after escaping? But that mean... You were inside for 300 years? Yes. It sounds crazy, I know. But don't even ask me why I stayed asleep all that time. That's definitely quite some lion, all right. But still, whether you meant to or not, I sure am glad that it's this century that you finally woke up in. What do you mean? With the amount of fighting we've done, we would have never made it this far without you. And not only that, but... Alfin, can you recall back to what it is that I said to you? Back when we left Menencia? About the dream of coexistence, and needing to learn what it entailed? Of course. That's why you came with us, right? To learn what you couldn't at home. Even in that time, I was well aware that what I was living was a lie. But at the same time, I also felt really compelled to fulfill my brother's wishes. I'll always remember him fondly. But the coexistence we're fighting for isn't for him. It's for people now, and those still to come. The world's bigger than just men and Sia. My dream is for all Danans, wherever they might be, to be free. If I've learned anything on this journey, it's that. And the one who brought me along was you, Alfin. I'll forever be grateful to you. Well, we're not out of this forest just yet. You should probably save your thanks. At least, until we've dealt with the Red Woman. I know. But whatever we find when we get down there, I'm through looking the other way. Kisara... Probably getting a little ahead of myself, huh? Let's take things one step at a time. Is everyone about ready? We'll soon be making preparations to land. Before we do that, just what exactly should we expect when we get down there? Kisara has a point. Now that I think of it, I don't know the first thing about Lanigus. I'd like to hear more too. It's been centuries since I was last there, and they didn't exactly give me the grand tour. Very well. First and foremost, Lanigus is was the base of operations in charge of the Crown Contest on Dana. Of course, it also happens to be a city in its own right, complete with its own independent society. Its social structure is based on a strict hierarchy. Put simply, the strength of an individual's astral arts carries great weight. Enough to determine someone's social rank, you mean? But astral arts are innate, right? So people's positions are fixed at birth. They can be honed with the right training, and there are admittedly other factors at play. But yes, that's basically the gist. 
As a result, family lines that churn out lords and their contenders wield disproportionate influence, and those lineages are treated as nobility. Those capable of only weak astral arts are effectively an underclass, denied the right to descend to Dana even if they wanted to. Still, even the lowest rung on the Renan ladder is considered superior to being a Danon. Keep that in mind down there. Thanks for the warning. As a lord, Dohalim must have been pretty high up in the pecking order, right? What about you, Xion? Come on, you've seen her skill with astral arts. You really need to ask? <laughs> Fair point. On arts alone, you're right. I'd have been sitting pretty. But you're forgetting my thorns. They weren't exactly an invitation to high society. Ah, uh, sorry. No, it's fine. It's refreshing to be around someone who says what they're thinking. Life's less complicated that way. Jeez, give backhanded compliments much? Wait a second. Are you? He is! Lost blushing! I am not! <laughs> of course, separating people into castes based on something arbitrary like arts is discrimination at its worst. As if such simplistic criteria could ever be a measure of someone's worth. So this red woman, are we expecting to find her on Lenigus? I would wager so. Lenigus is too deeply involved in all this to discard the possibility. Chances are she's also connected to the Renis Alma being stolen from us in Pelegian. If the Renis Alma is being used to exploit Dana, we need to take it back at all costs. That red woman's got a lot to answer for. Just as well I've got a ton of questions. We're about to land. The descent could be a little bumpy, so brace yourselves. If there are clues about your thorns out there, Xion, we'll find them. There's no one here. I wasn't expecting a welcome mat, but still... Lenigus's infrastructure is largely automated. Besides, people won't be expecting incoming traffic while the crown contest is still underway. Do you think anyone realizes that we're here? We may not have received a royal welcome, but I doubt our entrance went unnoticed. Don't let your guard down. I really hope we don't have to fight anybody while we're here. So now what? We've come all this way on a hunch that this red woman is here, right? And if we're lucky, the Renis Alma too. Any idea where we should start looking? There is an area of the city that is accessible only to the Sovereigns, known as the Forbidden Zone. That seems as good a place as any for us to start. Forbidden? What are they hiding? I don't know, hence my desire to find out. Fortunately, we just so happen to have a sovereign in our midst. In any case, changing the shape of a huge structure such as Lenigus would have required an immense source of power. Then you think that source might have been the Renis Alma? Precisely. Alfin said that he remembered the Renis Alma being used in the spirit channeling ceremony three centuries ago. Whatever the ceremony's purpose, if preparations are underway for it to be held once more, then the Renis Alma might be in the same place as last time, possibly together with the Red Woman. Hiding something of that worth in the residential quarters would only court trouble, in which case... It stands to reason we should be looking somewhere normally out of bounds. Is that it? Indeed. But it's been over 300 years since I was made a sovereign. You can't seriously think I'll be able to waltz right into the place after all this time. There's only one way to find out. 
If there's even a chance you can get us in, I say we give it a shot. Xion's right. Who knows? We might even find a clue to her thorns while we're at it. All right. It's not like we're swimming in leads, so let's try to track down the Forbidden Zone. Beyond that wall lies a city full of Renans. A capital city where Xion and Dohalim used to live, no less. Who knows what we'll find on the other side? Thinking about what could be lurking out here is giving me the heebie-jeebies. For such a loudmouth, you sure can be a worrywart at times. Oh, I'm sorry. How stupid of me for wanting us to stay safe. Would you two children stop squabbling? Or do you want everyone to know we're here? <clears throat> so how many Renans actually live in this place? I couldn't tell you exactly, though not as many as you might expect. Machines and Zoogles take care of most of the city's basic functions. There's Zoogles out here too, huh? Sounds like we can't afford to let our guard down after all. What in the world? This being Renan territory, I was prepared for a lot of things to look different. But this? This is a bit more than I anticipated. The very foundations of the city have shifted. What could have caused this? When Lenigus changed shape, it must have had an effect on the interior, too. Maybe when they sent the Wedge down to Dana? But they wouldn't move around the places where people live. These are their homes, right? I would think the citizens themselves didn't have much say in the matter. Either way, locating the Forbidden Zone just became that much trickier. Dohalim? Is that you? Avakir, I'm glad to see you're well. So it is you! But why are you here? Shouldn't you be down on Dana participating in the crown contest? And these people... So you haven't heard what happened on Dana, then? Heard what? Someone you know? An old friend. Hey, Dohalim. Don't tell me you've started keeping company with... They're with me. More importantly, what's happened here? Uh, I'm really not sure. The city's foundations began to shift without warning, and now everything looks like this. We're all waiting for the Sovereign to tell us what's happening, but so far... Avakir, listen to me. We're looking for the Forbidden Zone. Do you have any idea where we might find it? The Forbidden Zone? What business could you possibly have there? Trust me. The less you know, the better. 
You're just the same as ever. <laughs> I wish I could help, but what with the changed topography, I can barely locate my own home. Let alone the Forbidden Zone. Very well. It looks like we'll have to find the way there ourselves. Have you seen Faria yet? No. I see. Well, nothing much has changed with her. If anything, she's probably even more... I can well imagine. Why did you come back? You know it can only result in pain for you both. I've no doubt of that. You really are the same as ever. Fine, I understand. Just don't say I didn't warn you. And take care of yourself. Okay, Doe? So who's Faria? La! <sighs> if what Avakir said is true, it would seem the people of Lenegas are being kept in the dark about what's happening down on Dana. They seem to be just as clueless about what's going on up here in their own world. Despite the fact that it's actually here that the Wedge originally came from. We need more information. Let's talk to the citizens, see what we can find out. While we're at it, we can ask them about the Red Woman, too. And don't forget about finding the way to the Forbidden Zone, either. Let's leave the talking to Xion. We can't have a bunch of Danans poking their noses around. Good idea. I think that's for the best. I shall assist. You sure? Being a lord on Lenigus has its advantages. Right. Then we'll leave it to you two. The Danans among us should probably keep our heads down. What if people freak out? I shall explain it away by saying I'm leading you. What are we, dogs? What could be so important, it's worth destroying people's livelihoods and homes in the process? It's just... unbelievable. Uprooting an entire city as if it were mere building blocks. Someone's got an awful lot of questions to answer. From how it looks, they must be siphoning off astral energy from Dana, and then sending it to Rena. But why do all this? What for? Surely they can't be using all that energy for the Crown Contest. Whatever their purpose, disrupting their siphoning process alone won't be sufficient. Not while we still don't know what their endgame is. He's right. We need to stop this from happening ever again. This Forbidden Zone might be where we find some answers, right? So what are we waiting for? Let's get moving! You heard him. We don't have time to stop and chat. Let's move. So, I've been wondering, do you think when Lenigus was built, it was even made with people living here in mind? What do you mean? Well, none of this happened by coincidence, right? They must have designed it to transform like this. But then, if they knew people were going to live here, you'd think they would have taken that into consideration, to avoid all this chaos. Ordinarily, yes. You'd think so. Trust me, as far as we were concerned, Lenigus was our home, nothing more. No one knew about all this. It makes you wonder whether the city was just built on as an afterthought. But if so, to what exactly? Sorry, that probably sounded weird, huh? <sighs> Not at all. Sometimes it takes an outsider's eye to help you notice what you've been missing all along. 
This place is a mystery, that's for sure. Something tells me we'll find answers where we're going, though. Yeah, you're right, Xion. I'm sure we will. Oh, dear me. What an unspeakable mess this has all become. Just look at the state of our city. Even the Zoogles have stopped heeding our commands. Whatever did we do to deserve this? You really have no clue what might have caused this? Would that I- We have no choice but to grin and bear it. But do my eyes deceive me? Could I really be standing in the presence of his lordship, Dohalim of the House Ilkaris? I believed he was on Dana. Your eyes do not deceive you. It is I, one and the same. I have returned to fulfill a special duty, the details of which I cannot divulge. As your lordship wishes, first Lanagus mutates beyond recognition, now this unexpected visit? The Sovereign's plans are inscrutable indeed. The Ilkaris House has produced a great many lords over the centuries. I shall be praying for your victory in the latest crown contest. Your good wishes do me an honor. I wonder just how many people have been saved by Xion in some form. Your Lordship! Oh, what a great honor it is to finally meet you! I descended to Dana during the last crown contest also. Alas, when the contender I was backing failed to clinch the title, I returned. I witnessed the deaths of so many slaves. Indeed. Sorry to interrupt, but we're looking for a woman dressed all in red. Have you seen anyone of that description? All red, eh? No, I can't say I remember anyone like that. I imagine she'd stand out somewhat, too. Yeah. What about down on Dana during the crown contest? You didn't see anyone like that hanging around the Lord you were serving? What's with all these questions? I've never seen her, okay? Not recently or otherwise. Why do you want to find her anyway? Never mind. Forget I asked. Sorry to take up your time. Is everything okay? You look a little lost. Hmm? Oh, yes. I can't seem to find my way home, is all. I was just about to make my umpteenth attempt at a new route. I was hoping to head this way myself. The situation is a real pain, huh? 
I suppose the Sovereign knows best. I daren't stay here too long, though. A lower caste can only linger around these parts for so long before I outstay my welcome. I was hoping to avoid it, but maybe I'll have to go that way after all. You mean you know another way round? Lord Dohali Nilkaris! But how? Last I heard, you were in Dana competing in the crown contest. Yes, strange, isn't it? If you know another route, we'd be grateful if you could tell us. But, but of course. Please forgive me. There's a wall that sprung up ahead of here, with what looks to be an entrance in it. I thought maybe it was a passageway between the different quarters, but I've no way of knowing for sure. It's worth investigating, at least. I shall go and assess the situation. In the meantime, wait for me here. If it looks safe, I'll come and let you know. You'd really do that for me? A lord troubling himself for someone of my lowly status? Our lot in life is of little consequence. We are both Renan, first and foremost. Oh, why yes, my lord. Thank you. Well, we've canvassed the city for information. What do you think? No one has the faintest idea what's happened to the city after all. They haven't heard the news about the crown contest either. You'd think that info would easily find its way up here. Has it always been like that? Not to this extent. Which would indicate that something's suppressing the truth. That Lenicus is under some kind of control. Given everything that's happened to their city, the people here seem weirdly okay with it all. Yeah. That one guy even said his Zoogle had stopped listening to him. If that's true, these people are in big trouble. Everything that happens here is attributed to the Sovereign's will. It's the way people have been conditioned. Their belief runs deep. Nothing happens devoid of a reason. To them, it's all part of the Sovereign's grand plan. The Sovereign's plan. There is one thing I'm still not sure about. Just who is this person ruling over Lenegus? The Sovereign, of course. He rules from Rena while presiding over both Rena and Lenegus. Without the Lords or anyone in the middle doing his dirty work? Isn't Rena at least the same size as Dana? That's a pretty big dominion for one person to rule over. I would have thought ruling Lenegus alone would be difficult enough. The points you make are valid, though I confess I'd never given it much thought before. Here, the Sovereign's total authority is as natural as night turning to day. Come to think of it, I know nothing of the nature of how Rena itself is... <sighs> Shion, have you ever been... <clears throat> no, forgive me. Have you met or crossed paths with, or even heard of someone who's actually made a visit to the homeland? No, I haven't. Neither have I. In which case, I would imagine that... <clears throat> but no, surely not. Can it really be that no citizen of Lenicus has ever been there? Hold up, what are you getting at, Tohalim? Assuming what I believe to be correct, it's possible that no one on Lenigus has ever laid eyes on the actual Renan homeworld itself. No one but the Sovereign, that is. But what about trade and communication? There's got to be a flow back and forth, surely. Not if the Sovereign is imposing his will on Lenigus single-handedly. It could be a one-way street. But I thought you said that the Sovereign's all the way over on Rena. If that's the case, can he really rule directly over Lenigus from so far away? What if something were to happen to the city, like now? I'm beginning to wonder what the nature of this Sovereign even is. Alfin said he was forced into the role, right? Just before the ceremony. But Sovereign is also the title given to the Almighty Renin ruler. So which one is it? Whoever wins the crown contest inherits the throne from his or her predecessor, before becoming ruler over all of Rena and Lenigus. Thereafter, that individual is known as the Sovereign. Though, it would appear that the current ruler has gone silent. As for how Volron factors into all this, at this point, I no longer know what to believe. Three centuries ago, I became the Sovereign here on Lenigus. Oh. I just became, I was forced to. Me, a Danon. Three hundred years later, we cross paths with Volron, who also bears the Sovereign's crest. That's not the only thing we have in common. We both became Sovereign without winning the Crown Contest. 
Do you think Volron was made sovereign for the same reason? Because of that ceremony? I can't say for sure, but it certainly sounds like it. But that would mean that two sovereigns would need to exist at any one time. One whose job it is to rule, and the other for ceremonial purposes. We never did see Volron's body back in Ganeth Heros. Is a new ceremony underway with Volron at its center this time? Could that be what's causing all this strange activity here? Wait a second. You don't think Volron and the Red Woman are working together, do you? The ceremony can't go forward without the Renis Alma. The same one that the Red Woman stole. There's something else the ceremony needs. A maiden. And unless there's another one out there aside from me... Questions, questions, and yet more questions. Ones that it seems will remain unanswered until we can establish the Sovereign's identity. If the Forbidden Zone really is off-limits to everyone but the Sovereign, that seems as good a place as any to start. For the sake of liberating Dana, too. Then it's decided. That's where we need to go. One of the citizens mentioned a passage that she thought might lead to another section of the city. It could point us in the right direction. Let's go find it! I didn't realize Renans oppressed their own kind, too. And yet, weirdly, none of them seem to mind. Am I the only one who finds that strange? It is the way things have always been, so no one thinks to question it. You have experience in that regard yourself, do you not? Unquestioning acceptance of your own servitude. Yeah, that sounds about right. Even so, the quality of life here seems much higher than any Danon city we visited. I used to think it was impossible to build an ideal society without wealth. But I suppose having it doesn't always mean people are treated fairly, either. More to the point, not a single citizen seems to have even heard of the Red Woman. What if she's not here? What if it turns out we're looking in the wrong place entirely? It's still too early to say anything for sure. For all we know, she might be able to blend in, move around unnoticed. I say we hold off judgment until we've exhausted every avenue. Tell me, Dohalim, has that skill of yours got a name? And what skill would this be, pray tell? You know, when you're talking to people around town, the way they suddenly become putty in your hands. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. I do. It's called friendly intimidation. Look imposing and speak in a deep, booming voice, and presto, you'll have people wrapped around your finger in no time. I would never stoop to such scandalous tricks. Any feelings of intimidation are solely in the eye of the beholder. So there is a knack to it! How do you learn it? Can anyone do it? Now you've got me curious. Is there special training to master? Hmm, let's see. An obsession with being elegant is a must. Oh, and it helps to be old-fashioned, too. Bonus points if you speak in a way no one can understand. If you've a bone to pick with me, it'd be quicker to just come out and say it. What? They look up to you, that's all. I'm just helping them along. Hey! What's got into Alvin and Law all of a sudden? I can barely understand a word they're saying. And what's with the weird poses? Was it something they ate? I hope you're willing to take the blame for this one. I wasn't expecting them to take me so seriously. I'll go and have a word with them. With nobody left to run the show, I wonder what the people here are supposed to do.
I mean, their sovereigns up on the Renin homeworld, and all their lords were sent to Dana. But Dohalim was a lord, right? Only current acting lords have power. Renin society is quite strict about such matters. Even if the other lords were still around, I doubt they'd be able to do much about the situation. I wonder what they'd think if they were here to see Lenigus now. Balsif, Canabelt, Almadria, and Volron. Now that I think of it, Aside from Dohalim, we know next to nothing about the other lords. Well, yeah, why would we? To us Danans, they were just enemies we needed to overthrow. Nothing more. I know. But seeing Renans in their own city, going about their day-to-day -day lives, it gets you thinking. It feels strange to imagine the lords living here too, you mean? If you're that curious about them, why not try inquiring with some of the locals? Every lord in their household has their share of supporters here on Lenigus. And luckily for us, the people here are unaware of the events on Dana, which means they should be more inclined to talk to us. Balsef had it in him to care about someone other than himself? Really? It's possible. A change in position can do much to alter one's perspective. So even he might have had something he wanted to protect. 
This area doesn't look as badly damaged as that other district we went through. Indeed. The effects of Lenegus's transformation appear to be less pronounced here. Or, viewed another way, this area was simply luckier. There's something I just don't get. What is it? The crown contest itself has always gone ahead as planned, right? In which case, the current Sovereign of Rena should be whoever it was that won the previous contest. Yeah, that makes sense. So, who was it then? Hanfrecht Milgroth, the former Lord of Cislodia, if memory serves. So then this Hanfrecht Whatchamacallim, he's the current ruler of Rena? The last I heard, yes. Though, admittedly, I haven't actually seen him since the end of the previous contest. You're saying that ever since becoming Sovereign, he's never actually shown himself on Lenegus? I guess over Holocom, maybe, but not in the flesh. Same thing goes for the Sovereign that came before him. Now that you mention it, I don't recall anyone ever visiting Lenegus from the Motherland, Sovereign or otherwise. And that never struck you as a little bit... odd? <sighs> when you live here, it's as if you're conditioned not to notice all these strange quirks and discrepancies. The question is then, by whom? And to what end? A new Renis Alma is supposedly created to coincide with every crown contest, meaning each victor is awarded their very own. In other words, if that's true, there should be as many of the things out there as there have been contests. True, but going on what we witnessed in Pelegian, it didn't look like the sort of thing that could be made to order. But if even the victor's speeches have been part of some grand deception, then where are they? <sighs> Quite frankly, I'm not even sure what to believe anymore. You and me both. Though we are Renan by blood, neither of us even knew that such a thing as a Dark Master Core existed, remember? With any luck, the Forbidden Zone might give us some answers. No use standing around here chatting about it, then. Let's get a move on. Varya. Varya? Isn't that the person that Avakir guy was- Shh. But why are you here? Wait, don't tell me you've given up on the crown contest and come crawling back home from Dana already. Nothing to say? Even though you were willing to kill Tarnigan to secure your position as lord, you still- Kill? I'm here to take care of something. If you wish to continue this conversation, I only ask that you wait until I'm finished. Oh, of course. You always did prefer to take the coward's way out. Even after seven years and living on that Danon rock, you haven't changed one bit. But let me tell you, I haven't changed either. Not a day's gone by the past seven years that I haven't hated you! If killing me will bring you peace, then so be it. <laughs> Dohalim, what the hell are you saying? First, I have business to take care of. If it's vengeance you seek, I will grant you it. But you must wait. My sins are legion. Let me finish what I came to do. Then you have my word. I will let you do whatever brings you peace. Sure, that's it. Run away like always. You don't even have the courage to die. No wonder you leave it to someone else! You're just a coward!
Dohalim. I apologize that you had to witness that. Is it true? What she said about you killing someone? Each of us have our pasts. I am no exception. Before, back in Menencia, you mentioned having taken a friend's life over the throne. Is that what she meant? The mistakes I made there were not my first, and may not be my last. I will say no more. Did you mean what you said? About letting her take your life if she wanted to? She has more right to my life than anyone. But you can't just... Whatever happens, I have sworn to put an end to the Crown Contest, and to ensure continued coexistence in Menencia. I have no intention of expiring before I do so. There are far too many questions I still seek answers to. Besides, you have just as much reason to kill me as she does. <laughs> Dohalim! Forgive me. Some things are best left unsaid. What's this thing? be some sort of rest and leisure area for the locals. You think? Man, these Renin sure know how to live it up, don't they? <sighs> it is something the matter, Dohalim? Before I went down to Dana, my friends and I, we... We used to gather at this very spot and play music together. Avakir, Faria, and Tarnagan. <laughs> That was a lifetime ago now. Tarnagan. He was the one that Faria mentioned, right? He was once my dearest, closest friend. As well as Faria's betrothed. <laughs> Despite Faria's lower class upbringing, she possesses a tremendous talent for music. Entranced by her playing, I helped her overcome her sense of inferiority, and introduced her to Tarnagan and Avakir. It was a time of great joy. Four people bound only by their love of music, with no care for social standing. Only the next song, the next melody. A friendship based on mutual respect and a society where everyone is a prisoner to their social class. You really are different, Dohalim. I suppose it's natural you would see it as strange. I would have, once. Now, I think the idea of breaking away from society's constraints and choosing your friends based solely on affection is something beautiful that's worth cherishing. Besides, it was that way of looking at the world that laid the foundations for coexistence in Menencia. Your praise does me too great an honor. I was merely following the wishes of my own heart. And even then, 
It only lasted until the crown contest began. After that, Tarnigan and I became fierce competitors for the position of Lord. Tarnigan had fallen for Faria. By becoming Lord, he aimed to wrest her from her humble origins and raise her to the highest echelons of society. But fate was not so benevolent. What happened? Tarnigan was no match for me in combat. On a level playing field, he wouldn't have stood a chance. But he was desperate and low on options, and he couldn't stand the thought of defeat. You mean he resorted to dirty tactics to try to win, right? But then why does Faria think... Wait, don't tell me she doesn't know. How could I tell her? Combined with the trauma of losing her beloved, and by her friend's hand, no less, she would have been devastated. So instead you let her go on hating you, so she could use that hate as a crutch for her grief? <laughs> That's not the same as running away, though. It is exactly the same. Unable to face the loss of my friend and the burden of my duty, instead I decried my fate and looked away from what I'd done. As for what happened after, that you already know. But... If you hadn't become Lord, Menencia wouldn't be what it is now. The Danans there would still be suffering under Renan oppression like before. <sighs> Shion's right. What other Lord would have treated me as you did? Anyone else and I would have been dead long ago. You've saved so many people, Dohalim. You saved me. It's thanks to you that I'm here today. So, try not to blame yourself. The burden you've placed on your own shoulders is too much for anyone to bear. Frank as always. But, I shall do my best to heed your advice. Do you think he'll be all right? Yeah, I think so. He's got Kisara. It's important to have someone like that. I didn't realize how difficult it is just to be there for someone. Sometimes just knowing someone's on your side can be enough. And he knows, Xion. I promise he does. I hope you're right. Alfin. Yeah? I never appreciated until recently just how much you were always there to support me. It goes both ways. You've helped me keep going more times than I can count. Maybe, but I still wanted to say thank you.
I see a medic and supply officer over there. If they know... You're with me.
They'll likely offer their assistance. This is a true masterpiece. Damn it! Lenigus soldiers! Any way we can avoid fighting them? That all depends on them. Whatever happens, be ready. Well, so much for them not wanting to fight! Hold! I am Lord Dohalim of Elder Menestia. I command you! Threats to the city must be erased! No. Have they been brainwashed too? Brainwashed or not? If they want to fight, they got one! Stop! Fire support! Fire support! Fire support! The enemy here is on the We'll soon see about that! Yeah. 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 Then I'll split it open! Be my guest! Piss off! Burn! Damn it! Yeah. Yeah. Damn it! Get on your feet! Get on your feet! Get on Begin! Rising Falcon! Where are the we we A wailing banshee Ready and Here I go! The Tempest engulfs you! Those soldiers seem different from the citizens we've come across so far. Yeah. They weren't big talkers, that's for sure. They just attacked without warning. They weren't in the least bit phased by Dohalim's presence, either. Indeed. They seem to recognize us as enemies, nothing more. And yet, traditionally, Lenigus hasn't been high on threats. A few frenzied zoogles during experiments here and there, but not much else. Their glazed-over eyes reminded me of the soldiers and slaves we met back in Ganeth Haros. The ones in blind devotion to Volron. I've never seen anything like that here on Lenigus before. Maybe someone doesn't want us here, and the soldiers are their way of letting us know. What with the Red Woman, the Sovereign, and Volron, we're starting to develop quite the growing list of adversaries. At least we'll know to keep our wits about us. What's with that shining foe over there? This one's tough, but we have no choice. Let me know if you need healing. Prepare to be seen. energy. These ones can run straight to the to be Run the red. I'll grind you with it. Here goes. Damn it! Too fast. Stand back. I'll trip it up. Magic is magic. Tempest engulfed you! That'll bring you down! Tempest! There! Are you ready? Go. This ends now! Consider yourself finished! This should make for some good weapon crafting material! Melody. Here I come! Resonate with the earth! Rising! 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 R
Still in one piece? Victory nonetheless. 
We have a long way yet to go. Those soldiers don't seem to have any qualms about attacking on sight. Right, here goes! Oh, right here goes! It's through! Resonate with the earth! Here's the I hope they'll pass on! Reflexes will not serve you well here. Astral arts are coming along quite nicely. Coming along? What do you want to do with them? Oh, you know. Sprout flowers from the tip of my staff. Suspended in midair. So you want...
Wanna be a street magician then? are bearing fruit. Retreat if you know what's good for you. Light burst forth. Radiant Genesis. Lunar corruption! Not as I watch! Quiet! Burn! 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 In here! Rising Between astral energy! Say no more! Pierce! Lunar corruption! Lunar flame! With this, I can become even stronger! This must be it. The entrance to the Forbidden Zone. But it's just a wall. How do we get through? Whoa, we? I thought this was Sovereigns only. Alfin. Interesting. If Alfin's presence still opens the way, it would seem the Sovereign of three centuries ago and now are considered one and the same. What? What the...? Alfin. You again. Tomorrow's the spirit channeling ceremony. We'll finally play our parts as the Sovereign and Maiden. How have you been feeling? What am I Sovereign of? Shuffled from lab to lab, always treated like an experiment. Whenever they look at me, all they see is a Danon. I don't even know what their precious ceremony's for. Let alone what they're going to force me to do as the Sovereign. Tell me, if we're both in the same boat, why do you seem so calm right now? No choice. Becoming the Maiden's not something I wanted for myself. But they... They said Rena's prosperity depended on it. How could I say no after that? 
Still, as a Renan, at least you got to decide. Good for you. Meanwhile, I was taken from my homeland. You aren't the captive one here. It isn't right what they did to you, and I'm sorry for what it's worth. When this is over, I swear I'll help you get home. I can't do this alone. One more day. How could I say no to that? It's not like I have any choice in the matter anyway. So, what's your name? It's Naori. Naori Imeris. Try to remember this time. You don't act like them. Like the other Renans, I mean. How come you treat me like a person? Because you are. It's true we come from different worlds. But neither one of us asked to be here right now. In that sense, you and I are much the same. We couldn't do this. We wouldn't be able to talk to each other as people. If we didn't see the humanity in each other. So I suppose the question you should be asking is, why wouldn't I treat you like one? You're not like the others. Maybe they're not like me. Here's what we'll do. We give them their damn ceremony. You get me to Dana. That'll be the end of it. I'm taking you at your word on this. I'm trusting you, not them. Nayori. What the hell just happened? That vision. Did everyone else see it too? That person Alvin was speaking to. She looked exactly like Shion. It was Naori. Naori Imeris. Isn't that right? <sighs> yeah, that's right. She really does look like Shion. I'm beginning to see why Alfin was so confused. That's all very well and fine, but what did we just witness exactly? It was too real to be a mere hallucination. It was a conversation we had 300 years ago. The night before the ceremony. You mean all of that really happened? We just saw an episode straight out of your past? But how was that even possible? Unless... Could this be the Red Woman's handiwork too? No, I don't think so. Why not? You guys didn't feel it? The moment the entrance opened, it was like a stream of Dan and Astral energy rushing over us. I felt it too. And not for the first time either. It was the same sensation as back inside the wedge. That would make sense. After all, vast amounts of Dana's astral energy were being siphoned and sent up here to Lenigus. For all we know, perhaps we're close to the spot where all that energy was stored. So you think it might have been the energy itself that was responsible for that vision we just saw? But how? And why? We have no way of knowing. Maybe it's not even as deliberate as all that. <sighs> Shion, you okay? Yeah. It was all just a little sudden. That's all. So that was my ancestor, huh? It was like looking into a mirror. Yeah, there certainly is a resemblance. What about you? How are you holding up? Me? Even putting aside the question of where that vision came from, it's likely we'll see more of those. Reliving painful episodes from your past. Do you think you can handle it? I can't just pretend like the past never happened. Besides, if it helps us uncover the truth of what that ceremony really was, it might also lead to answers about your thorns. Alfin. That's not all. This whole time, we've been fighting to free Dana from the Renans. But now that we're here, it seems those same Renans might have it just as bad. I'd like to liberate them too if I can. Which is just another reason I can't afford to shield my eyes from the truth. Whether you're on Dana or somewhere else... You always stay the same. Your indignation and righteous passion, your desire to free and protect, they're all hardwired into you. Not that I'm complaining. Come on, let's bust this thing wide open. Nobody's here. Stay sharp. After that last illusion, there's no telling what could happen in here.
Faria, how did you get in here? Wait, something about her isn't right. What's wrong with her? She doesn't even seem to know where she is. Yeah, you're right. She looks just like the soldiers we encountered outside. Summoning? But that's preposterous. She never had that kind of power when- We can talk later. Here it comes! What? I've never known Faria to control Zoogles like that before. How about with a stone that looks suspiciously like a Master Core? What the... Where did she get her hands on that? First we handled the Zoogles. Then we get some answers. Uh, Exploit the enemy's weakness. Lightning is dead! Can you take it? Oh, 
she's casting is way too powerful to control. At this rate, her body won't be able to take much more. <laughs> Don't believe <leave. gasps> Forgive me. Man, I thought we were goners. Everything okay? Yes. She's only unconscious. Not her. I meant you. Xion, please. Can you treat her? I can try, but I can't promise she'll be back to her real self when she wakes up. All I can do is heal her physically. We're not even supposed to be in here. Maybe it'd be better if we moved her to somewhere a little safer. Don't you think? In that case... I'll take her off your hands. You? Avakir, what are you doing here? I was curious what you were up to, so I took the liberty of following you to find out. I overheard what you said about Tarnigan, about how he really died. I'm sorry, I had no idea. And you believed me? What makes you so sure I wasn't lying? I like to think I know you a little better than that, Dohalim. Give me some credit. <laughs> I'll take Faria. Leave her with me. I know better than to ask what you're up to, but whatever it is, I hope it all works out. Thank you. He seems like a good friend. He hasn't changed. He never was one to stand out. Instead, he was always hanging back, worrying about everyone else. As for Faria... It's always the closest to me who get hurt. You don't seriously blame yourself for what happened to her, do you? Somebody got to her, to strike back at me. Someone who knew me well enough to know that I'd hesitate to fight back. And the same goes for you as well. Neither you nor Faria would have lost loved ones, if it wasn't for me. You're wrong. Kelzalik was the one who killed my brother, under orders from Almadria. As for Tarnigan, if it weren't for the crown contest, he'd still be alive. That and the whole damn hierarchy that makes it possible. But that's why we're fighting. To put an end to this whole messed up system that treats people as expendable. Indeed. Ridding society of this blight is really the only way I know how to atone for my sins. You can't atone, Dohalim. <laughs> I know it hurts to hear. But those people are dead. No amount of soul-searching or trying to make amends is going to change that. Forgiveness, acceptance, those ships have sailed. 
So I just forget the harm I caused? No, the opposite, in fact. You remember. You never forget. You keep it in your heart always. And then you go on living. Not for those already passed, but for those still alive. For those still alive? Kisara's right. So long as we've still got breath in our bodies, we can make a difference in the lives of others. Lives being the operative word. That's what living's all about. Being able to still make a difference. Punishing yourself for the past won't make the pain of your conscience go away. Only fixing the problem in its stead. Is that what you're saying? That's right. You have to live for tomorrow, Dohalim, not for yesterday. And not only that, you need to live for yourself and for the change that you still can be. <sighs> I shall try. Don't forget, we've still got a mystery to solve. The Forbidden Zone, remember? Xion. Huh? Thank you. You have my deepest gratitude for what you did for Faria. Glad to be of service. I'm glad we could stop Faria without hurting her. You all did much for her as well. I'm... Most grateful. Huh, shucks. We're on the same team, right? Let's move on. Do you think Faria was really being controlled by someone? Certainly seemed that way. The question is, who? The Red Woman? The same person who's behind all of this, I'll bet. Whoever that is. Brainwashed or otherwise, the feelings of resentment she holds towards me are real. Someone used her because they knew we'd hold back. If that's not playing dirty, I don't know what is. It does tell us one thing, at least. Someone here in Lenegas is watching us. Someone who means us harm. There's no question. That attack was meant for us alone. By someone capable of getting inside a person and manipulating them like a weapon. We need to find whoever it is, fast. What is it, Rinwell? Do you hear something again? Yeah. It's that voice. The will of Dana's astral energy. What? There's so much astral energy. But where's it all coming from? It's almost like... it's alive.
That was the spirit channeling ceremony just now. No, it was more than that. What the hell was that? It felt like everything was on the brink of... Like the whole world was seconds from... Oblivion. It's the same vision as the one my thorns show me. A vision of impenetrable darkness that swallows up us and everything else. An empty void. A nothing so complete and dominating that there aren't even words to describe it. The end of time. The visions of the apocalypse you've been seeing. If I'd known how bad they were, I... So, everything we just saw, those were Naori's memories, right? That's right. It was as if her innermost thoughts were speaking directly to us. At least I know they weren't mine. That power flowing into her, it reminds me of Xion's thorns. If they're what's responsible for all these visions she's been having, then maybe... Maybe my thorns are made from that same astral energy? If that is the case, we just found the missing link between your thorns and what happened here three centuries ago. No, more than a link. Perhaps even the very heart of the matter. I've never felt astral energy so powerful. What was that? If it's the same energy your thorns are made of, it must be dark astral energy, right? And isn't that something only Renans have? Correct. Dark astral energy is possessed by Renans alone. And when enough astral energy gathers together, it develops its own form of sentience. If so, maybe that complete oblivion is exactly what the Renan astral energy's will is wishing for. But why? I don't know. Will can be a pretty vague thing to nail down. It's more of a feeling. Just like the will of Dana. But the will of Dana is made up of astral energy too, right? And if that's what's been showing us these visions... I don't know, should we really be getting so involved with this thing? Dana's will would never want oblivion! But you can't say that for sure! Cut it out, you two. Squabbling over theories will get us nowhere. <sighs> Let's keep moving. If it's Dana's will showing us these memories, then I'm as clueless about its motives as any one of us. But if it could lead us to the truth, then I want to find out more. Xion's right. All we can do is keep going. If these really are Naori's memories we're watching, there could be truths in them I was never aware of. And I think... They may be the kinds of truths I need to confront if we're going to keep fighting. I'm sorry about what I said earlier. Come on, let's go. Finally, we begin to understand what the thorns are. Yes, and their source. A ceremony that occurred three centuries ago. But we still don't know how to get rid of them. I just hope we can find a way. That vision we saw. It was as if it was meant specifically for us. What do you make of it? Do you still think the will of Dana might be involved somehow? Maybe it's trying to tell us something. But what? Well, it could be supernatural. You know, like seeing dead people, messages from beyond the grave, ghost-type stuff. That that's your grand theory? That we're being haunted? Come on, Law. Wait. He might be closer to the mark than you think. What if a person's thoughts and deeds were to somehow become indelibly etched into the ether of a place? And what if those with a connection could then somehow pick up on them? You think that's what it was? Some kind of message someone left here for us? I am merely entertaining the possibility. Whether it was Dana's will, or somehow connected to the Sovereign and Maiden's powers, I do not know. Okay, back up a sec. You're saying that if a place is full of enough astral energy, it can somehow show us events that happened centuries ago? More to the point, how does that much astral energy gather in one place anyway? Seems unlikely it happened naturally. 
Whatever it was, it survived here intact for 300 years. Whoever left it for us, the strength of their intent is beyond doubt. The strength of their intent? <sighs> Soon, we might very well learn the truth behind Shion's thorns, as well as my own past. I have to be ready to face anything. But whatever happens, I'm determined to save Shion and Dana. Nothing I learn can change that. Hold up, you guys. What is it? I want to look through that room over there. I'm curious what we'll find. That's the room you visited in your past, right? Sure. We can check it out. This looks like some kind of research facility. A laboratory secreted away in the Forbidden Zone. Why am I past being surprised at this point? Looks pretty deserted. Let's check it out. It might give us a new lead. People of Lenigus, the Forbidden Zone is the stuff of dreams. Yet here I am, standing within its hallowed halls. It's off limits even for lords, then? Talk about an exclusive club. Being exclusive is one thing, but how many important facilities let in only the Sovereign? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Strange doesn't cover it. If it was only one room, maybe. But a place on this scale? How do they keep it from falling into ruin? Whoever the Sovereign is, they can't manage the upkeep of this whole place themselves. Did no one ever talk about it when you were growing up? No, not that I can remember. Then again, Sovereigns and Forbidden Zones weren't exactly breakfast table conversations. The Forbidden Zone is a hallowed place, at one with the Sovereign's authority. Grounds of the one true ruler who presides over all Renans. That is what we believed this place to be. No, but we were made to believe it was. But now, it is finally time to discover this area's true purpose, and why it was kept hidden behind the scenes for so long. I can make this work. Well, can you make head or tail of it? These are experiment records, by the looks of it. 
Reams of them, dating back hundreds of years. Let's see. A composite being capable of controlling Danon astral energy, so as to convert its molecular and elemental makeup. The creation of a governing central figure, taking the form of a Danon. Codename Sovereign. Sovereign? Wait, there's more. Research into utilizing force field crystals for the purpose of stable astral energy containment. That must be the master course. With all this raw data, there's bound to be records here somewhere about the Maiden and the Lords, too. About the Lords? Why would they be on there? Think about it. The Lord's crests are clearly of a piece with those of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. Not to mention the fact that the contenders to the Crown are selected from otherwise regular Renan citizens. In other words, it may be that all Renans are unwittingly being made subject to some kind of... grand scheme. What about the Sovereign? Does it say anything else? Where do I start? All I've read so far is the headlines. There's so much here. To sift through all of it would require specialized... Wait. What is it? Did you find something? It's a list of names. With the title, Test Subjects, Sovereign. It's your call. Read it. There must be dozens of test subjects listed here. Hundreds, even. All of them failures. Wait. I think I've found one that was successful. Test subject number 1273. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Alphen. <sighs> they re-engineered me. Right here in this lab. Alphen. It's fine, really. What about the others? Was I the only one? Test subject number 10105. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name... Volron. Volron? But that means... She's only sovereign because someone made him that way, too. He's the last one. In three centuries worth of records, you and Volron are the only two subjects on whom the experiment was a success. <laughs> but what about the winners of the crown contests? Does this mean that none of them were ever crowned sovereign after all? Upon victory, the Sovereign shall return to Rena and rule over Rena and Lenegus combined. When a new Sovereign is decided, the outgoing Monarch shall relinquish their post and live out the rest of their days on Rena. So we were told. But according to these records, there have only ever been two Sovereigns, neither of whom had anything to do with the Crown Contest. It's all lies, including the part about the Sovereign residing in Rena. The Crown Contest was never about deciding a new ruler. It must always have been devised for some other purpose. But even supposing that's true, someone must have been in charge for the past three centuries, right? If it wasn't the Sovereign, then who was it? Crown Contests have been held this whole time, in spite of the fact that there was already a Sovereign. Me. Meaning that for the past three hundred years, Someone out there has to have been maintaining that lie. The same person I'm willing to bet is behind all this. The Red Woman? It's possible. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's the mastermind behind this scheme. She could be working for someone else. Someone back on the Renan homeworld. Either way... It's fair to say she's definitely involved somehow. What about the data records? Is there no other information that could help us? 
Not that I can see. Just file upon file of experiment results. There's nothing here about who's behind all this, or what their endgame is, unfortunately. I've barely managed to scratch the surface, mind you. You won't be able to read through it all, but you're welcome to take a look through what you can, while we're here. I'll do that. So this is where Alfin became the Sovereign, and Volron as well. The significance of this location would suggest... Hey! It looks like the terminals in here turned on too! We should look through them. They might contain valuable information. Only two sovereigns in over 300 years. So why has the experiment only succeeded twice in all this time? And if that's the case, why keep on doing it? Was there really no other way? Or could there be some other reason? Dohalim. <laughs> Forgive me. Alfin. I'm fine. I'm just a little shaken, that's all. I knew what I was already, so it's not like it's a surprise or anything. But it's strange. I've got all this rage inside of me, but I don't even know who it's for. I'm scared that I'll put a face to it, just to have someone to blame. If that were to happen, then I... No. Then we'd help you fight it, before you ever got that far. <sighs> Wouldn't we, everyone? Yeah. We wouldn't just sit by and watch you spiral out of control. That's right. No good can come from being consumed by hatred. If you ever start to lose your way, you can count on us to guide you back. To remind you where home is. And I would be happy to lend an attentive ear, should you ever have need. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. I think I'll be okay now.
Mayori, I... I... Don't talk. I have to do this. I gave you my word that I'd help you return to Dana. The next time you open your eyes, you'll be home. But you... My place is here with my people. I still have a duty to fulfill. I'm sorry for what you've endured. Rena never should have dragged you into this. It's not your burden to bear. But... The mask contains a sedative. It should keep your mind from tearing itself apart any further. Let yourself go to sleep. This should help with the pain. Time to go, Elfin. Farewell. Mayori. His injuries are worse than I thought. Short-term treatment isn't going to cut it. I'll have to switch the healing pod to long-term hibernation mode. The chance of surviving hibernation's less than 10%? And worse, long-term use of the mask carries a high risk of damaging his mind and nervous system. But... Lenigus will be nothing but ashes, and this starship along with it. I don't know if I can fulfill my promise to you, Alfin. But if... If doing this will grant you even the slightest chance, I have to try. I hope it's enough. Please, live for me, Elfin. <sighs> that vision... It must have been from when Naori helped Elfin escape Lenigus. She sure went above and beyond the call of duty. Even with Lenigus crumbling down around her, she chose to stay put with her people. So that's why you lost your memories and sense of pain, and why you were asleep for that whole time. It was all the result of one agonizing decision Naori made to save your life. Yeah. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't even be alive today. I owe her everything. More than I could ever hope to repay. Now that you know how she felt, how do you plan on honoring her wishes? She kept her promise. If the Renan people she fought so desperately to protect are at risk from a malevolent force, then I owe it to her to carry on her fight. Naori was the one who put that mask on me, and made me Iron Mask. She did it to prevent your soul from tearing itself apart. She knew you might lose your memories and sense of pain as a result. But more than anything, she wanted you to survive. And you did.
this place. We've seen this in one of Naori's memories. Of course. After 300 years, this is where it was held. The spirit channeling ceremony. This is where the Renis Alma was. So this is the place where you and Naori... The Renis Alma isn't here now. Nor is the Red Woman, it seems. I know it's difficult, Alfin. But there will be time to dwell on the past later. For now, we need to keep moving. Come on. <gasps> Naori? What is this? Is it the work of Dana's will again? It's been a year since the ceremony. That day, I shut away inside of myself the power that caused Elfin to lose control. Since then, my visions of the future have grown more and more fearsome. Is this another memory? No. It's different this time. It's like she's speaking directly to us. <sighs> what we did back then... Not so much as a day passes when I don't think about it. About what was done to us. All in the name of a ceremony. The purpose of which we were never even told. As Sovereign, they linked Elfin's consciousness to Lenigus itself. The Renis Alma was intended to control his power, lest anything should slip through its cracks. That day, as Maiden, my role was to temper his power. I was meant to guide it forth, and give shape to the strength inside of him. Link to Lenigus itself? But then, everything that's been happening... But that power showed me a vision. A vision of Oblivion. When I realized that vision was a prophecy of the apocalypse we were about to unleash, I couldn't go through with it. But without a maiden, the ceremony was doomed. Alfin lashed out, his consciousness no longer his own. I did what I could. Using my abilities as the maiden, I tried to seal that power away inside of me. But it was too late. Lanigus had already been brought to its knees. Thousands upon thousands of lives so cruelly snuffed out. All because of me. Because of what I had done. With the destructive force now slumbering inside of me, I knew I had to find a way to dispose of it. Anything to make up for my failure. But I didn't know how. Especially since that power was astral energy itself. In which case, ironically enough, the Renis Alma seemed to be my best bet. That, at least, would hold the astral energy dormant. Assuming that no malevolent third party got to it first. With the Sovereign and Maiden's combined power, Perhaps I could shift the chaotic energy inside me into the Renis Alma instead. That's what I hoped, but alas, it was not to be. The Renis Alma was lost, and Alfin the Sovereign was in a starship bound for Dana. My only choice was to seal away the destructive force inside of me using my powers as the Maiden, to buy the world what little time I could. The time needed for a new Renis Alma to be crafted, and for a new Sovereign to appear. Even if by doing so, it meant I would be passing the curse onto my descendants as well.
Please, forgive me. I never meant to burden the future world with this threat, too. I only wish that there was something more I could have done. Wait, you can't just... Naori. <sighs> that message just now, was it directly from Naori? Or was it the Danon voice speaking through her? What? These are the clothes that Naori and I wore during the ceremony three centuries ago. So you're saying this is the Maiden's outfit? That's right. These clothes are designed to resonate with the Sovereign and Maiden's abilities. They focus and enhance them. And they appeared now because... Naori must have left them here for the new Sovereign and Maiden knowing the day would come when they would need them in their fight against the Thorns. These outfits are directly linked to the answers we've been chasing this whole time. If they're here, it must mean it was Naori's will for us to find those answers as well. Locating the Renis Alma would allow us to neutralize the dark astral energy inside Xion, thereby silencing her Thorns. Is that what Naori's suggesting? It makes sense. After all, Master Cores and Spirit Vessels are both able to prevent the astral energy inside them from developing sentience. By that logic, it would stand to reason that the Renis Alma would have the same ability on a larger scale. We have a Maiden and Sovereign. Now all we need is the Renis Alma, and we'll finally be able to free you of your thorns. Shion. It's possible? You really think so? I do. We can rid you of your thorns and stop the world from falling to oblivion. However, the spirit channeling ceremony already failed once. Even if our goal is different this time, we can't be sure the same thing won't happen again. We should take care not to be too optimistic. You're right. It's the barest sliver of a chance. But if there's even the slightest hope it can work, I'm willing to stake everything I've got on it. I... I know it's too early to let myself feel relieved, but... I just can't seem to help it. Just hearing there's the slightest chance, even though I know the world's still in great peril. It's selfish of me, I know, but... but still... No, it isn't! You found hope to believe in. It'd be strange if you weren't over the moon about it. Rinwell's right. We can rid you of your curse and still save the world at the same time. Thank you. Naori entrusted us with the fate of all humanity. Now, it's up to us to prove that trust was well-placed. Starting with a little game called... Hunt the Renis Alma. Yeah, we've come all this way. Now we just need to search Lenigus and Rena until we find it. Yeah, we can protect the world and save Xion at the same time. I too shall lend my services. My knowledge of Renan lore is bound to be a useful asset. And they say modesty is dead. <laughs> Miracles just seem to follow wherever you go, huh? How do you know it's me they're following? We're all in this together, Xion. You included. Now let's get moving, shall we? Last I heard, we had an apocalypse to stop. <laughs> Thank you, Naori. So Naori sealed away the power that made me lose control of myself. She stopped my rampage and saved my life. But then, that power she'd sealed away was passed down to you. 
I'm so sorry, Shion. It's my fault that you're cursed. You're wrong. What happened to you was because of the ceremony and Naori's attempt to stop Oblivion. You paid a heavy price for it and then fell asleep for 300 years. The reason you lost your memories... Is the reason for your curse. The, the thorns. thorns. It all leads back to them. But once they're gone, we can finally put an end to all this. When my thorns are gone, I never dared to dream that such a thing could be possible. No. The truth is, I think maybe I've always been dreaming about a life without my thorns. The touch of my family, or playing with my friends, holding hands with Rinwell, or giving Law a deserved smack, embracing everyone, all the normal things that people do together. I always wished I could experience them for myself and finally know what they were like. Is it really okay for me to believe it can happen? I'm so scared of getting my hopes up. What if it doesn't work out in the end, and... That's not going to happen. I'm here to make sure it won't. Forget fate or destiny or anything else. We're going to live... <sighs> a normal life. There are a lot of things you still want to do, right? Yeah. You're right. It's such a strange feeling. I know that we've still got plenty of fighting up ahead. And it's for my sake, so I can live. You're worth fighting for. I believe you, Alfin. Good. I'll keep on fighting. For as long as it takes. Until our future is finally in our hands. Sounds like this Naori chick had quite the big heart. Her position demanded nothing less, from the sound of things. She didn't focus on differences, least of all those between Renans and Danans. Yeah. It was Naori who first showed me that such a thing was even possible. And then she saved my life by sending me back home to Dana. Not only that, but she willingly stayed behind on Lenigus for the sake of her people. It sounds like she was quite the hero, all right. A truly caring person. That's as if walls meant nothing to her. The one separating the Renans from the Danans, or herself from others. She had no need for them. Which basically meant that she never had anything to break down in the first place, huh? Yeah. I think you may be right about that. You inherited that legacy. Her wish for the world. Don't I know it? She's kind of like a lodestar guiding our way, showing us what we can aspire to.
That's quite some door, all right. This might finally be it. The heart of the beast. We'll find the Renis Alma and the Red Woman inside, right? After everything we've been through to get here, they damn well better be. We'll probably be needing you to open this one for us, Sovereign. Go for it, Alfin. This is it, guys. Time to see what secrets are in store. long way from the residential quarters now. It looks completely different. Yeah, you're right. Actually, this place... It reminds me more of being back inside the Wedge. Except the Dan and Astral Energy feels even stronger here. In a portion of the city reserved purely for the Renin Sovereign. Maybe he just has strange tastes? This place looks like it has been here for quite some time now. If its design were a matter of personal preference, we would be talking from centuries ago, or perhaps even further back. Still, this isn't the sort of decadence of taste spoken of in artistic circles. So what is it then? Hold up, decadence? Artistic circles? When a preference is indulged to its extreme, it descends into kitsch, eccentricity for the sake of it. I'd be happy to illuminate you further. That depends. Does it involve you buying me lunch? The void that art fills isn't the stomach, it's the soul. In that case, I'll let you know the next time my soul starts to rumble. Now all we need is something to fill up the void inside your head. Shut up! Volron! He really was still alive. And there's the Renis Alma. Then, is this another spirit channeling ceremony? Wait, though. Something doesn't seem right here. Oh, once more, the powers must be united. Born from the fires of chaos, the world does seek its rightful state. All must be sacrificed in the heart of Renna, at the shrine of the true sovereign. What has happened to him? He's lost himself, reduced to a mere cog in a machine. Hey, look! Over there! Isn't that... the Maiden's Crest? Can it be... that this entire chamber is meant to act as a substitute for the Maiden? It looks like it's still running, but... are we already too late to stop the ceremony? That's what caused Lenegus' transformation. And the purpose of the ceremony must have been to drain all the astral energy out of Dana. But for what purpose? What could possibly need astral energy on that sort of scale? I don't know. But whatever it is, I'll bet it's connected to those visions of oblivion. Regardless, we cannot stand by and let them steal Dana's energy. That said, we should retrieve the Renis Alma. Because right now, we need that most of all. <sighs> He's not gonna lunge at us out of nowhere, right? Not the time, Law. Alfin, look! <sighs> the Red Woman! So we finally found you. I have a lot of questions for you. Wait! What? <sighs> they all have the same face? How is that even possible? <laughs> what is this? Who the hell are they? 
It can't be. Are they even people? It's hard to know for sure, but I think they're the true rulers of Rena. They're not feeling particularly talkative. It's no use, Elkin. If we don't fight, we may as well be sitting just here. Good point. Let's stop them before this gets out of hand. Fighting is useless now! Do you think it's really over? <gasps> Astral energy. Watch out! They've got something up their sleeve! <laughs> <laughs> what? It's self destructed? Elfin! I'm okay. Just a little roughed up. You had me worried there. Who said you could touch that?
Damn it! He's awake! Hmm. I should have thought as much. So you know this place? Naturally. It was built for me, after all. We'll save that for another time. More pressing is how I'm going to tear you apart. Even after all this time, you still insist on hating me? You cut me down. Sovereign or not, you will pay for that. <laughs> You're obviously bluffing. You can't even move right now. Really, is that what you think? Did you really think that such a petty device could hold me? Are you going to claim it's because you're a ruler? Be it sovereigns or lords. In the end, they're all titles given by someone else. Plus, what kind of ruler would spend all his time chasing Alf, who happens to be another sovereign? Idle prattle. I proved my worth and the Sovereign's powers were granted to me. Were they really? We already know the title of Sovereign doesn't denote royalty. It is but an overblown codename for those with a designated part to play in these proceedings. You mentioned before that you were not the only one stolen from Dana, correct? Yeah. There were countless. And every one of them besides me... died. All of those failed experiments, and they still kept going back to Dana. There must have been some vital reason their subject had to specifically be a Danon. Then there were the records we found in the library, for you and Volron. They were locked 300 years apart, and yet the data they took from you was exactly the same. Which leads us to a single conclusion. Then you mean... Voron was kidnapped just like Alfin? But then he became a... A slave from Dana. Just like us. Isn't that right, Volron? Hmm. So he posed as a Renin and caused all that suffering to his own people? How could you? If you knew the pain of being a slave, why would you inflict that upon others? Hmm. Renin and Danan are meaningless distinctions. Me and everyone else. That is all that matters. I will stand above all others and take what is rightfully mine, starting with this. A red woman? Another one? Give your master back on Rena this message. No one makes a fool of me. Let them know I'll make them suffer. Don't do it!
But no, I will be your shadow no matter where you try to run. Never forget, I am the one who devours everything, who answers to neither spirit nor man. My word is law! I am... I am... Are you two okay? Yeah. We'll be fine. Is Volron... have we finally seen the last of him? We can but hope. Those red women... what the heck was their deal? Could they be the ones behind all this? The same ones who put those soldiers and Faria in a trance? What? Those brainless things? <sighs> Either way, they've done a runner with the Rhinus Alma. Damn it, that's the second time now! Whatever's stolen from us, we'll steal it back. The future's ours to protect. And right now those things are what's standing in our way. We can head them off at Rena. Did you say Rena? Volron mentioned a master of theirs holed up in the Motherland somewhere. If that monstrous forms their true identity, I shudder to think who they take orders from. Yeah. There's a good chance it's not human. That's for sure. So this thing over on Rena, that's what's really behind all this, huh? They have the Rena Salma in their grasp already, so it's unlikely they'll have cause to return to Dana. I agree that Rena's our best shot. Then we're agreed. Let's head back to the starship. But seriously, I was not expecting Voron to actually be here. He seemed to care not one whit about Renans or Danans. Yeah, and not in a good way like with us. I didn't see that coming about Volron. As for those red women, to think they were monsters all along. Tell me about it. One minute they look perfectly human. Next thing you know, they're not actually human at all. They definitely weren't Renan or Danon. I'm not even sure language would get through to them. So what were they then? human zugal hybrids? Is the most terrifying thing anyone said all day. How about you, Shion? Dohalim? You ever seen anything like that before? No, never. However, if they're the same as the Red Woman we've seen with Volron, I think it's safe for us to assume they understand our language at the very least. I had just so much I wanted to ask them. About Rena and Shion's thorns. Unfortunately, they blew themselves up before we got the chance. Why would they do such a thing, though? To take us with them? Or in order to keep something hidden. Both sound plausible to my ears. They took off with the Renis Alma too, remember? Yeah, they did. And the next time we meet them, we're going to make sure they tell us everything they know.
Victory nonetheless. We have a lo long way yet to go. Hi, Hoodle! Ignite! Oh, Here, ready! Benediction light. Double demon face! Lost in pain. Demon face! Far enough! No further! Let the marksman handle this! Be yeah, the to illuminate the dark! You I'm ready! Leave the to me! Yeah! And the public to me! Where are you going? Demon 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 the wind. I can carve through armor! In here! Where? Do it! Yeah. This ends now! Consider yourself finished! Rising Wyvern! More where that came from! Any injuries? For you. Not today. No one Healing circle. Take this. I'm sorry, Cardinal. Commander of Heaven. Phoenix Cyclops. On go. your knees. I can carve through armor. I'm not done. 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 I'm I'm ready for the next battle.
What the? When did it get pitch dark all of a sudden? The lights are all out. Think it has something to do with the explosion back in the Forbidden Zone? Doe? You two. Faria, Avakir. Thank goodness you're safe. Avakir filled me in about everything. About how I ambushed you all. She doesn't remember a thing. So she really was being controlled. He told me about Tarnigan, too. Is it true? What difference does it make? What's done is done. Stop casting me off! Just for what? Faria, one... not now. It can wait. Dohalim, Lenegas is in grave peril. So I can see. It's the city's core reactor. It's damaged. Some of the basic systems we've managed to keep online, but complete restoration still a way off. You're an elite technician, though. You can fix it, right? If so, then what's the problem? Panic's begun to set in among the citizens. Until now, whenever something like this happened, the Sovereign would issue a decree. But this time, not so much as a peep. Any longer and we run the risk of riots breaking out before we can get things back up and running. Forget the Sovereign. I doubt you'll be hearing from him anytime soon. What's that supposed to mean? Do you know something I don't? Suffice it to say, the Sovereign isn't the kind of ruler we thought he was. That is, if he ever even existed, which is looking doubtful at this stage. Are you out of your mind? Why, if people knew that a lord such as yourself was whispering such blasphemy, they'd- There's no time to explain now. It sounds like we need to find a way to keep Lenegas from spiraling out of control. We need to stop that riot. But how do we do that? Riots feed on discontent and unrest, right? So if we want to keep the peace, we just need to put people's minds at ease. At ease? Like by letting them hear directly from someone they trust? That's it. Who's the highest ranking person in Lenegas right now? Lenegas wouldn't have a next in line. After all, you said the Sovereign rules over everyone directly, right? Correct. The closest thing to an authority figure would be a lord, and the only one left is... Ah, very well then. Avakir, you mentioned a few facilities were still online. Which ones? Oh, why hasn't the Sovereign said anything? Please, won't somebody explain what's going on? Is it over? What's going to happen to all of us? Heed me now, fellow Renans of Lenegas. It is I, Lord Dohalim Ilkaris of Elder Menencia. Look up there, it's Lord Dohalim! Hold on! He should be in the crown contest! Shouldn't he? Why isn't the Sovereign talking to us? The Sovereign is seeing to other matters right now. In my capacity as Lord, I speak to you in his stead. You're afraid. As people so often are when faced with the unknown. I hope you'll allow me to put your fears to rest. The city's core reactor has experienced a malfunction. However, we have our top engineers attending to the matter, and things will soon be back to normal. I know that you feel abandoned, perhaps more scared and alone than ever before. But I ask you all to keep one thing in mind. You are Lenegas. Not the Lords and Sovereign. The solidarity of its citizens is the mortar that holds it together. If we don't allow ourselves to be distracted by our differences, if we put our hearts and minds together and stand as one, I am confident we will find new hope. I would be honored to stand with you. Not as a person of loftier rank, but as another human being among many. I hope that you'll lend me your strength. For if we can persevere as one, I know a bright tomorrow awaits.
Your speech seems to have done the trick. Looks like the city won't be descending into chaos after all. I only pray the relief will tide the city over for the time being. What you said earlier, about the Sovereign possibly not even existing, was it true? It's still too premature to say with any certainty, but I believe so. This whole time, this world we've been fed was a lie, built on nothing but falsehoods. But it can't all have been... I can believe it. After everything I saw in the Forbidden Zone, what they did to Faria, it's the only explanation that makes sense. But what about hierarchy, Avakir? Authority? The very foundations of Renan society? How can we live without someone to guide us? I'd say we found someone capable of doing just that, wouldn't you? Y you You can't be serious. I have business I must take care of first. But once everything is over, I shall return. But not as your sovereign, nor as a leader the likes of which the people here are used to, I think. But... how else do you propose to rule? I'm not sure yet. All I have is a feeling that here in Lenigus, a new dawn is on the verge of breaking. One in which people won't be judged by birthright, or on the power of their astral arts, but on other things. More important things. Things like... Oh, I don't know. Musical talent, for example. When I bumped into you after all those years, I said you were no different. But I was wrong. Truth is, you were always different. I feel like... Like... Maybe now I can finally begin to accept Turnigan's death. To see a future. <laughs> you go finish whatever it is you've got to do. I'll hold down the fort here in Lenigus till you get back. Thank you. I guess you're not going to make it to Menencia for the foreseeable future, huh? Indeed. Forgive me. The people of Elderman and Sia can look after themselves just fine. It's the ones here on Lenigus who need someone to guide them. Besides, with you leading the people here, it'll help spread the idea of coexistence beyond Menencia's borders that much faster. Sounds like you're in it for the long haul. How could I not be? after the second chance that I've been granted. From this day forth, I shall dedicate myself to the future inhabitants of this world. Though the memories of the departed shall remain forever in my heart. Remember, you're going to be leading the people here, not ruling them. True enough. Whatever would I do without you, Kisara? With or without her, I suspect you're gonna have your hands full when the time comes. We should be heading back to the ship. Business on Rena awaits.
Looks like the people of Lenegas can rest easy. I couldn't have done it without your words of encouragement, Law. Hey, you're the one who made the speech. I think everybody can share the credit here. In one sense, when all is said and done, perhaps I have been a slave this whole time, too. You, a Renan lord? How do you figure that exactly? I was complicit in the Renan system, bound by its values. Resigned to being swept along, without the resolve to take a stand. And when I realized the severity of my mistake, all I longed for was punishment. A lord. And yet my first instinct was to place my fate in the hands of others. I think I can relate. I couldn't stand watching my people bow and scrape their way through life, but I didn't know what else I could do about it either. The ability to think for yourself and be your own master, that's what separates a slave from a free person. At least, that's what Law's dad Zephyr used to say. Zephyr taught me how to fight. But in doing so, he also taught me how to live. Even if it means stumbling along the way. If it's on a road of our own choosing, free of regret. Why, that's the road of freedom. Or, to put it another way, so long as his heart is compromised, even the loftiest of kings is no freer than a slave. I think I finally understand now. This Zephyr character sounds like he was a wise man indeed. I only wish I could have met him. There's just... so much I wish I could ask him. Especially now. I wonder... Have I been correctly carrying on the torch that he passed to me?
How long have you known? Known what? About the darkness I carry inside me. You seem to have been aware of it for quite some time now. Why ask me now? What does it matter? But... Yes, I have. I've pretty much known that something was gnawing at you ever since we left Menencia. So basically since the very start of our journey then. Just when I thought I couldn't feel more ashamed. Leave the past where it belongs. We have no need for it now. You're forging ahead. That's what matters. If my brother could see you, he'd be proud. <laughs> not as proud as he would be of his sister, I'm sure. Well then, just as well it's not a competition, huh? Kisara? Anyone at home in there? <laughs> Sorry. Did I look distracted? Among other things. To be entirely honest, I couldn't tell whether you were smiling or frowning. You were thinking about Dohalim, weren't you? <laughs> that obvious, huh? I was just thinking how good it is to see him moving forward at last. It was always so infuriating. Knowing how capable he could be if he just put his mind to it. A prisoner trapped in a cage of his own self-doubt. But now, he's finally beginning to spread his wings. I'm happy for him. So, then why do you look so sad? Oh, I don't know if I'd say sad. There's a bitter sweetness to it, I guess. It's good and... strange. Knowing that he won't be needing me anymore. It probably sounds weird, doesn't it? I have this massive worry off my mind. I should be jumping up and down for joy, right? Must be that maternal instinct of yours at work. Rinwell's right. You're like a mother bird, finally letting go as her child takes his first shaking and nervous flight from the nest. A pretty big child. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. I wouldn't like to see Dohalim's face if he heard you say that. All this has made me realize 
I can't allow myself to become a prisoner of my own making like he was. If Dohalim can forge his own path ahead, then I can too. I won't be left behind. Ridiculous. Okay. Ah. Hmm. It seems like the people on Lenegas don't really know much about Volron either. I remember being quite surprised when the Lord of Ganeth Haros changed so abruptly. Didn't you have any doubts that something suspicious was going on? On the contrary. Remember, we Renans are raised to accept everything at face value. Pardon me. I guess her willingness to stoop to any low came from a survival of the fittest worldview. And some people here not only shared her belief, but championed it as morally right, too. That doesn't make it true. Too bad they couldn't see through her. Yeah.
I guess she intended to spread it throughout all of Lenigus then. Good thing the lines were down so she couldn't. It almost sounded like she was praising them too. Maybe there was more to the guy than at first glance. I shall refrain from commenting. Hmm. <laughs> Ganabelt was so horrible to people, yet he was invested in helping Rena succeed. Doesn't that seem just a little inconsistent? I'm perhaps biased in this matter, I admit. However, in my mind, while all lords vie to become the next sovereign, they're also meant to serve as guardians of all of Rena. It seems like Ganabelt also had people he cared about until the very end. So why couldn't he extend that to us Danins? When you think about it, the families of Renan lords must see them differently than the rest of us. Yeah, despite the brutality they're known for. They must have had a lot on their shoulders carrying all the weight and responsibilities of Renan society. 
Renans live in a world where strength and power determine their position in the social hierarchy, so they tend to grow up fiercely competitive. But their loyalty to their people is also strong. It's what brings them together against outside forces, and nothing exemplifies that more than the Lords. That's what makes them the guardians of all of Renna, so to speak. Right. It's the same reason Balsif hated my guts, and Ganabelt went after you. Because we're threats to Renna. Guess that makes you an even bigger oddball than we thought. So, Alfin, have you gained anything from all of this? Yeah. I think it's made me realize that the Lords were all people, too. Balsif and the others? They all had their own circumstances to deal with as they went through life. Yeah, but still, just because they had loved ones in their lives doesn't mean... I know. What they did was horrible. I'm not trying to dispute that. But at the same time, they weren't incomprehensible monsters either. They were individuals, just like the rest of us. So I guess what I'm trying to say is... You're saying that they weren't bad because they were Renans, or because they were terrible monsters. Even if they did terrible things, they were still just people. Renwell. Am I wrong? Not at all. Being a Danon doesn't make you a good person. And being a Renan doesn't make you a bad one. I think that's something we've all seen. Xion and Dohalim definitely make a good case for it. And I'm going to keep doing my best to make sure I earn that trust. As a fellow human being above all else. I thought we'd find answers on Lenigus, but we just ended up finding more questions. You can say that again. And now we have more problems to fix, too. Like figuring out how to reform Lenigus. That can wait for now. We've got more than enough on our plates to deal with as it is. Like figuring out who's really running the show on Rena. Yeah. Which is why we're going to the Renan homeworld. All the answers we've been looking for are on that planet. The person responsible for all this. The Red Woman and the Renes Alma. The answers have to be there. Are we prepared to finally find them? So, what do we do first when we get there? We know nothing about the Renan homeworld or what we might face once we arrive. We should get a feel for how things are on the ground before we take any serious steps. It's also entirely possible that the first thing we're going to face is an attack. If we come across a capital, we should- ah! Ah! What?
Damn! The hell just happened? Our course has been altered. The coordinates are pointing to a different destination. What's that? The ship's controls aren't accepting my commands. The engine is being shut down. That's bad, right? Quite bad. We've lost control of the ship. Is all of this the Red Women's doing? Are they trying to finish us off before we can land? <laughs> Everyone! Look there! Flower blooming out of Retta? But that flower looks like it's absorbing all of Dennis' energy. And it appears Lenigus is serving as a conduit for that energy to reach here. Could that have been its true purpose all along? If that's true, do you think the people back on Lenigus are all right? <sighs> we can only pray that they are. Damn it! Haven't they taken enough already? When is this going to end? A flower of oblivion. With everything that's happening, we need to get back to Lenigus. Is the ship still offline? Unfortunately, yes. Even more so than when it laid dormant. Can you fix it? Starships are extremely complex machines. One wrong move while we're out here in space could very well cost us our lives. So what? We're just stuck inside here, floating around? For how long? <sighs> I don't believe this. We've made it all this way, and now we're stuck here? We're watching Dana die before our eyes, and we have no choice but to sit here and starve to death? Law, calm down! You're not the only one who's worried here. Right. Sorry. It's still too early to give up. There has to be a way to get out of this. Alfin. Ah! Now what? The starship, it... it's back online? No, this is different. Something is pulling our ship in towards it. We managed to get moving, but where are we? It looks like Lenigus in here. Do you think we might run into more Renans here? Or those Red Women? Perhaps. 
Someone brought us here. The question is, who? We haven't been ambushed, so that probably means they aren't hostile. Still, why would anyone want to bring us here? Uh, hey, Shion! If they wanted to attack us, they could have done so while we were back on the starship. We should see where this path takes us. Shion, just in the nick of time. Here, lend me a hand while I... No! What the... Oh, right. The thorns. <laughs> My bad. No, I'm the one who should apologize. I overreacted. Again, Law? Can't you even go a minute without putting your foot in your mouth? Seriously, it's fine. I'd rather that than people feeling like they're walking on eggshells around me. Besides, I'm the one who should be vigilant about not touching you guys, not the other way around. Actually, I've been meaning to ask. Not being able to touch people. Does it ever get lonely sometimes? I guess I never really thought about it in those terms. It was either accept it for what it was or come undone. Before long, it was just part of my everyday reality. I think I even forgot there was another way to live. Which isn't to say I didn't feel alone. I did. Always. So numb to your reality, you couldn't even recognize it as loneliness? I don't know how you managed. It's fine. I know I'm not alone anymore. But... I can't even touch you. No way of lending you a shoulder when you're down. Even Alfin. I appreciate the concern. Until I get rid of these thorns... I guess I'll have to put up with it just a little longer, but not forever. Alfin promised me that. Maybe it'll be soon, maybe it won't be. But either way, the day will come. And I'll be ready when it does. Yeah, just hang in there. One day, we'll share a big warm hug. You'll see. I promise. <laughs> ah, boo! Ah, what the? Are you out of your mind? This isn't the time for games, Rinwell. Oh, come on. How am I supposed to resist with you looking all jittery like that? It's called experiencing feelings appropriate to the situation. You ought to try it sometime. Y yeah, but seeing you act all nervous, you're making me start to feel nervous too. Uh, oh, sorry. Staying alert is important, but too much caution can cloud your judgment. Try to strike a balance. Still can't get over what we saw happening outside the starship. Yeah, our planet's really not doing too hot right about now. I've only ever seen Rena from the surface of Dana, so I figured it was just another round planet like ours. Still though, I never would have imagined Rena actually looked like that. And what's the deal with that giant flower coming out of it? Beats me. I have absolutely no clue. It's so surreal. It Looks like a broken egg or something. Rena and Dana. We were taught that both worlds were spherical bodies that floated amongst the stars in the heavens. But to think that they lied to us not only about the Sovereign and the Crown Contest, but also the form of our own planet. Dohalim. Okay, who's the wise guy that summoned us here? Someone formidable enough to bring our starship along with us. They must be here somewhere. Let's find them.
That beam of light joining Dana and Rena. It was the Renan side that it first came from, right? That's what it looked like. And then the Danon side responded. Perhaps it was some kind of directive from the Renan homeworld? To reawaken the Wedge and Lenigus? Which would mean that whoever's behind all this is on Rena after all. But what are they after? Is it really worth going through all this trouble just to steal Dana's energy? Try to stay calm. With so many factors we don't understand, dwelling on it won't get us anywhere. <sighs> what is it? No, it's just... Zephyr once told me the same thing. So much for me making progress, huh? You made it this far, didn't you? You notice something, you change it. That's all anyone can do. But you can't stand still in the meantime. This place looks a lot like that room we saw back in the Forbidden Zone. Huh? What's that? Ah, it's one of those! A red woman in disguise. Or is this their true form? So it was a trap? It doesn't look like it can move. Tell me, are you the one who brought us here? That is correct. It is unusual for me to have unexpected guests these days. It can talk! What are you? Have wrecked 35. Have wrecked 35? Is that your name? Correct. What is this place? No, wait, before that, just what exactly are you? Are you somehow associated with the Red Women? Before I answer, I have a question for you. How did you all arrive in this sector? We did not come to this place by choice. Our ship was brought here against our will, by a group of red women who can shift into the same form as you. In that case, we can assume my brethren who serve the Great Spirit have deemed you all to be a threat most grave. What do you mean, serve? Are you saying there really is someone more powerful than the red women, pulling their strings? What did you do to us? I examined your bodies. You have not been harmed in any way. Identifiers detected. The Sovereign and Maiden are among you. However, you aren't under its control. 
I see why they viewed you as a danger now. Oh, goody. More riddles. Do you think we can trust this thing? Like it or not, it may be our best chance at a ticket out of here. Let's at least hear it out. I shall now answer your questions. We are Helganquil. The Red Women you encountered previously are a form of disguise we employ from time to time, but not our true form. Helganquil? You are on Dake Faisal, a celestial base which drifted here by accident. The will of Rena's Great Spirit no longer reaches us here. Since my sudden separation from the Great Spirit's influence, I have used any and all means to extend my lifespan. As I have done so, I have also set out to monitor and research Rena and Dana from this position. A question. What is this Great Spirit of which you speak? Is it something that rules over your kind? Correct. The Great Astral Spirit is a large mass of astral energy that fills all of Rena, one with its own will, a voice we cannot refuse. A voice? Just like Dana. The voice of the Great Spirit speaks to our hearts directly, and we have served it without question throughout the ages. Does that mean it was controlling your minds? Wait a second. Could this Great Spirit be the true Sovereign of Rena? The true ruler of Rena? It could be the same thing that's controlling Volron. Wait, back up. You're telling us this Great Spirit of yours is the one that ordered you things to harvest the astral energy from Dana? I'm not sure I believe that. Why not? We've already made contact with the will of Dana back in the Wedge, and in the Forbidden Zone on Lenegas. If Dana has a will of its own, I don't see why Rena wouldn't. Maybe not, but think about what you're saying. If Dana has a will like Rena, then that would mean that we've been controlled by the voice of Dana this whole time, just like these things. Dana's will hasn't been forcing us to do anything. Yeah, but... Let's assume that what Hevrek 35 claims is true, and that we are indeed cut off from both planets. Even if we had previously been under the control of Dana's will, we would have noticed now that we are disconnected. Your fear is not based in logic. The voice of Dana is much smaller and quieter compared to that of Rena's great spirit. Rena's astral energy is amassed at its center, whereas Dana's is shared among all its constituents. So thinly is that energy spread that it cannot coalesce and formulate a will. Our findings here indicate as much. Which explains why we felt its will where we did. The Wedge and Lenegas are where so much of that energy had been accumulated. The Great Spirit's desire is to consume all astral energy. And the pursuit of that desire is why you see Rena in its current state. As a result, it has turned its attention toward Dana. Is that why the Crown Contest is necessary? So that the Great Spirit can feed off of Dana? Indeed, and it was to that end that we Helganquil devised the Crown Contest. Had the initial spirit channeling from 300 years ago succeeded, all of Dana's astral energy would have been seized. <sighs> but the ceremony failed. Lenegas was severely damaged, and you lost both the Sovereign and the Renesalma. Correct. A change in plan was required to ensure the spirit channeling success. However, recreating the Renes Alma required a vast amount of energy. That is why we turn to Dana. So that was the real purpose behind the Crown Contest. An efficient means to harvest the necessary energy from Dana. This is all happening because of me. Nevertheless, you still haven't answered one of Alfin's original questions. Just why have you brought us here to your base, Hevrecht 35? First, it was to confirm the identities of you, my unexpected visitors. Second, it was to ascertain whether you would be likely to accept my request. 
A request? But what could someone like you want us to... I wish for you all to slay the Great Spirit. I'm sorry, did you just ask us to kill your master? I did. It is in your best interest that you do so, I might add. What makes you say that? Lenegas has entered the final stage of the spirit channeling plan. As we speak, Dana's energy is being harvested en masse and transmitted to Rena. If nothing is done about the Great Spirit, it will not be long before all is lost. You're saying the destruction we saw earlier is just the beginning? That... We won't let that happen. Why do you want us to kill the Great Spirit so badly? Is it to save our world? To free you, Helganquil, from under its control? Why? No. My primary concern is validating our findings and analysis, which have taken many years to realize. As such, it is my desire to see how your actions impact and change these systems. However, I will not deny that vengeance also plays a part. Vengeance? For what? In spite of our long service to the Great Spirit, our species is on the brink of extinction. You mean... you're dying? At this stage, it would be wise for you to talk with the others. Ask them what you need to know. Once you have your answer, return to me. If you agree to help, I shall fix your ship. Others? Just how many of you are there? I am the only Helganquil who inhabits Dake Faisal. It's no use. I think it's done talking to us. Let's take a look around. 